Yeah. Have the MOTD and everything? Sure. All right. So. Uh, yeah, everybody just got back to the Favored Wind after retrieving the Ark and escaping the, the Emperor. Uh, it's late afternoon. Uh, I'll share the date and the time for you. Uh, you guys were actually only on the ship for uh, about 40 minutes. So it's not been very long, of course, since you left the Favored Wind and, and just got back, of course. Uh, but it's late afternoon now. Uh, stiff breeze blowing in. Uh, it's blowing in kind of a, a, st a slowly swelling cloud cover. Uh, sun's still peeking through a few inches above the, the western horizon. Uh, but after that long 40 minutes or so aboard the, the, the ship, um, the deck here seems a somewhat peaceful rest, but there's still halflings running everywhere. Uh, it's somewhat ill at ease. Uh, kind of looking back over the ways, there's no trace of the ship that you guys left, uh, nor the, the Kraken that took it down. Uh, Skurv and Two Tooth are hoisting the skiff up over the side of the ship. Uh, Norok, you had climbed up of, uh, you know, up the rope ladder to the deck with Samson kind of handing you the discs uh, before you climbed aboard, and then he kind of takes them back as soon as he gets aboard. Uh, Sarah and Pogo came back on the broom. Did you guys hop off? What are you guys doing? Uh, I hopped off and waited for the rest of the group to get back onto the ship, but uh, I'm pretty tired, and I, I think I really need to go go to sleep. Okay. I'm very much wanting to go take a nap. Um, we'll, we'll get to those in just a second here, but um, so Sarah, then, are you on the deck as well, or are you still flying around? Um... Can I see over the deck if I'm standing? <laughs> how, how do you mean over the deck? Like you watching the them railing? to make sure, yeah. Kind of. The railing is probably right about eye height for you, because uh, this wasn't a ship that was, you know, made for for halflings. So, you know, it, it's. Pro but I mean, you can kind of duck a little bit to see below it. Then I'd probably be floating up just until everybody got up on deck. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and I'm actually going to go grab a drink and then bring it back before I take my nap. Okay. All right. So you then are you kind of trudge off as soon as you're you're made to deck and, and you. Yep. Where did you you set? I, I forget. You made you know a room somewhere on the ship, but I don't remember. Was it below decks then? No, I took the uh, captain's quarters. Oh, that's okay. Uh, all right. Um, that's right. I forgot about that. So uh, Artemy, then you were in shark form. Did you hop back up and go back into elf skin or what? Uh, yeah. Okay. Alright, then with everybody kind of gathering back on board and, and uh, you know, reboarding the ship anyways, relatively safely, uh, Samson, of course, having uh, uh, some injuries as well. Both Actually, I think everybody was pretty beat up a little bit. Let's see. Uh, Artemy and Sarah both topped off, but Pogo and Nora both took some, some hits. Um, but the, the, the dwarf captain, Orvin, uh, he's up on the quarter deck and he shouts down to a nearby crew and he says, he says, Brody, spin a starboard, uh, carry Jim, drop the sails, uh, get us the hell out of here. And then he clambers down the, uh, the quarter stairs to reach you all gathered on the deck. Um, he says, oh, I'm, I'm glad to see you bastards. That, that sea beast has, uh, me and the boys shivering all the way over here. Uh, I've never seen, seen such a monstrosity. And as he's saying this, the halfling crew are kind of running about. The, sail, the sails are unfurling down, the ship is dipping into the waves, kind of turning to the southeast. Uh, he says, what happened over there? Did you, did you find what you were after? Oh, I'll tell you what happened. We were attacked by penis monsters with faces and mouths, and I, and I, I it was pretty terrible. Pretty terrible. I'm gonna have a drink. He kind of squints at you a little bit and then looks over. Yeah, at you heard me. <laughs> like he doesn't respond to you. He looks over at Norak and Samson. Is it is is he is he okay? Did he get whacked on the head? I'm not too happy right now. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah, he got hit, but uh, he's all right. So yeah. Was uh, found what we were after, and there's plenty of interesting things on board. So, not exactly human. He kind of his head tilts a little bit. He says, "Are are we, you know, to be concerned about this? Are you, you all okay? You're not infected or anything?" Not that I know of. Uh, I'm Simpson. definitely fine. <laughs> uh, no worries. Give me, give me just as a, as, a, as a quick check here. Give me a performance check on uh, Pogo or Deception. You can make either one, whichever you prefer. All right. Okay. Yeah, he he still he squints, but he doesn't seem to disbelieve you, anyways. But uh, uh, Samson is Samson kind of interrupts him a little bit. He says he says Captain Orvin, our group here, we need to have a talk in private. Do you mind if we use your cabin? And uh, Norman kind of nods. He says, uh, and he, Samson can use Our Yogg friend here might take up too much space in the other, so uh, it won't leave us much room to breathe. Uh, and Norman kind of nods. He's, he looks over at, uh, at Pogo. He says, well, 
the, the Gleeman here was using it, so it's up to you. I suppose you don't mind if it's you're the one using it anyways, right? Nah, that's fine. Uh, you guys heading off to, to the cabin then? Anything else you're trying to do ahead of time? I'm grabbing a drink, and then I'm going to the cabin. Okay. We're going to go to the cabin. Okay. Yeah. Alright. Um, ship is, is kind of beginning to, to head southeast now. It's crashing over these, these short little waves. Sea's relatively calm, uh, heading back towards Cadogan. Uh, the crew are beginning to return to their kind of cheerful halfling nature and, and begin belting out their, their sea shanties. But, uh, the... Uh, Samson closes the door behind all of you, and he stands kind of in front of it. Uh, and he's still holding these very large discs. Uh, uh, Pogo, I don't think you had seen these yet. In fact, none of you guys had actually seen them. You would just, you know, you knew that he was carrying this sack, and and uh, Norok, you know, having carried it for a while, so you could feel what was inside. But basically, there are this this uh, collection of four really large discs, um, along with this kind of piping that looks like it's some kind of a framing. Uh, but basically, they look like big, uh, are you like shields, like big plates. What's that? Pogo, Pogo would probably say something like, what you doing with those big plates that are you going to start your own religion? Is that what's happening? Interesting. <laughs> was, that, was it a Mormon joke? That was 100% a Mormon <laughs> joke. I'm glad like you got plates. it. Yeah. Golden plates. They look pretty heavy. Yeah. Yeah. you got to have this special uh, stone to look through to be able to read them. Uh, anyway, so he's, he's kind of holding them, you know, and it's basically he's got this uh, probably three and a half or so foot diameter uh, discs, this, this group of four of them. Uh, kind of held across his chest, like basically his entire torso was covered by these. Um, and he's, uh, he's just standing in the doorway there, um, you know, reaches behind himself, closes the door, he says, he says, he looks to you specifically, he says, Pogo, your bravery and your health are invaluable. Uh, you've helped save, save thousands of lives, and I will see that the Empire rewards your efforts justly. Now, if you will just hand me the Ark, please. Oh, no, it's okay, I've got it, it's fine. I, I've got it covered. You see him, his jaw set kind of tight, uh, like, like he, he kind of expected that this was going to be some trouble. Uh, he says, "Little sir, I, I mean no offense, but I mean you're you're a gleam and you know not what it is that you hold. Without the proper containment, that artifact will consume you and put all of us in danger. Not to mention the chain of dogs, whom we came all this way specifically to protect. You you simply must turn it over." Listen, I'm going to tell you right now. If you try to take this from me, something bad might happen. If you don't turn it over, worse will happen, I can assure you. Oh, you, you trying to intimidate me? You trying to intimidate me? Uh, Quick question. Maybe something bad, maybe something even worse will happen to you. <laughs> By the way, I'm laying down in the bed with it in my pocket. <laughs> it's yeah, just in a pocket. What's that, Becky? Did I see where he put it when he grabbed it out of the box? Um... You know, you were standing right next to him actually, because you were you were you'd actually just opened the box, so you definitely saw him grab it and kind of put it under an arm. But it's it's not small enough to fit in a bag, or I mean, in a backpack maybe, but not otherwise. Like it basically would be either in his hands or his backpack. That could have been a minor illusion. Who knows? <laughs> uh, you didn't try to toss one over. <laughs> um, real quick though, so that Justin, because like I said, this this will have a you know a good amount of kind of catch up, uh, Justin. This is the chain of dogs. I just based it in there. Uh, in the in the chat. So the chain of dogs is a name that was given to those refugees, which these guys were all a, a group. They were part of this group of refugees. They were kicked out of Abbey, um, and uh, uh, there was just for numbers wise, there was twenty two to twenty four thousand uh, when they were uh, kicked out. But they were forced to march in the desert. A lot of them died through that. And then after the crowblinders intercepted them to try to, to save as many as they could, uh, there were skirmishes with the Vabians afterwards that killed off a lot of them. So, so basically. So. All, all I know, though, is I, I I just don't want anyone to take this away from me. This is yeah. mine. Yeah. I'm very in, I'm very I need this. So I mean, I'll I'll maybe hang out with you a little bit longer, but uh, I should probably hold on to it. So he he's clearly Samson is clearly frustrated. Um, uh, for Sarah, uh, you would have seen. I mean, it, he can't hide it. It's too big. So, like, you'll, you can basically see that it's in his backpack or in his hands. What do you... Where is it right now, Justin? It's got to be in my backpack. Okay. It's about... Right. It's like a good-sized flower vase. Uh, got a lot of shit in there, though. <laughs> yeah, like, it, it'd be, it'd be kind of sticking up out of the backpack just because it wouldn't... You know, basically, if the backpack was empty, you could probably see it in the whole way. Otherwise, it's going to be kind of jutting out a little bit, so... Um, 
So, to take everyone's mind off this whole stone object thing, I'd like to sing everyone a song. When I was a lad in a fishing town, the old man said to me, You can spend your life, your jolly life, just sailing on the sea. You can search the world for pretty girls. Your eyes are weak and dim. Don't go searching for a mermaid, son, if you don't know how to swim. Uh, he's, cle- he's just completely scowling at this point. Um, the, the, uh, is Sarah doing anything with that knowledge, having seen it? Yeah, I'm trying to find on my spell if it takes one sorcery point. Or- and he'll keep singing. Because her hair was green as seaweed, her skin was blue and pale, her face it was a work of art. I love that girl with all my heart, but I only like the upper part. I do not like the tail. I think it's just one point, so I'm just going to look at him and apologize and cast darkness on his backpack. Okay. Like, you realize nobody will be able to see except for you, right? Yes, and then I'm going to try and take it out of his backpack. Okay. Um, Real right. quick, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just feeling around in the backpack, I'm going to make sure I keep a hand on it. I'm very, very <laughs> curious about now what's happening. Okay. Well, I mean, you, you would only, in fact, both of you roll uh, uh, initiative for me. Uh, Samson, as you're singing, <laughs> is, is was interjecting. Um, and he's clearly very frustrated, like scowling at you at this point. He says, "He says, I'm afraid I must insist, Gleeman. I cannot allow you to hold an object so dangerous without precaution. At that point, the, the room starts to fill up with this darkness bubble that kind of just envelops the whole room. Uh, you hear movement in the room. Uh, you have just a, a fraction of a second to react. What is it that you're doing? Are you talking to me? Yeah, you're, you're, you're first, and then Sarah's going to get to go. The room is filled up with darkness. You oh. can't see. I'm just going to put my hand in my backpack and make sure I have a hand on my object. Okay. <laughs> uh, and in the backpack. <laughs> okay. Uh, you, you do feel the, the kind of, uh, you know what crenellations are? <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, you know, do you know what a rampart is? Yes. Okay, so you know the uh, kind of over and then I should have played this game before taking the SATs. It would have been very helpful. <laughs> you probably learned a lot. Uh, yeah. So, so the, the the castle wall, the top of a castle wall, that's crenellation. Mm-hmm. The, yeah. How it's like, you know, there's basically spots for somebody to hop out, fire an arrow, and then hop back behind it for cover, that kind of thing. Uh, so so I'm holding the, the crenellation of, the, of the, <laughs> the object. Crenellation. Crenellation. Uh, I think it's too old. Uh, anyways, you you're, you feel the kind of smooth stone surface on the top of this. In fact, the, the stone feels. Uh, like it's one solid object, and you can tell that the uh, oddly enough that the the, uh, the shape of this thing is not. Uh, it doesn't feel like multiple stones have been put together. It feels like it's carved out like this, and the crenellation is etched into it somehow. Uh, feels very strange, um, but anyways, it, it's a comforting feel, of course, as soon as you reach in and touch that. What is Sarah trying to do? He's about to get away from you inside the cabin. Uh, he's only got one hand on it, right? Uh, yeah, you see. He, still on his bag? He, no, he flipped the backpack around into his lap, and he's kind of holding his, you know, his arm, or like in his one one arm in his lap, uh, holding his object, and the other one on the, uh, on the, the thing in his backpack. Kind of thing. I've also sat up at this point. In okay, as soon as, as soon as the room went dark, he sat back up. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, as soon as he sat back up, put a hand on it. Okay. I guess just try to grab it out of his backpack. Okay. Um, just trying to grab it and pull it away? Yeah. Alright, it'll be a strength check, both of you, contested strength check. Um, I'd say because you already have your hand on it, it's not going to be... Normally you would be a disadvantage, Pogo, for, for uh, it being in the dark and not knowing like where it's being pulled away from. But it really can only kind of go one way out of your backpack and you already have your hand on it. So both of you make a strength check. Oh, and Sarah is disadvantaged because she's still exhausted because not eating. So, uh, Honestly, probably probably wouldn't have mattered too much. <laughs> you rolled really high anyways, but uh, uh, you feel two small hands grab the uh, uh, the top of the tower shape and try to yank it out of your backpack, uh, and your, your hand, you just kind of hold it still uh, and then wrap your, your left arm around the base of it to keep it from moving. Sarah so at to... this point, I'm also going to stand up, and I really want to hold on to this, and now I think there's something crazy happening, so okay. I'm going to pull my rapier. I don't like where this is going. 
Okay. Uh, you've got the backpack around your front, so you kind of, kind of, uh, you know, on football style, pull it up under one of your left arm. Sure. Uh, and draw and stand up on the bed. Draw your rapier. Uh, you're in the middle of the dark there. You see this happen, of course. Nobody else can see what's happening. What is Order Norak and Artemy doing? When he so just knock him out by hitting him in the back of the head. Can you even see me? Yeah, nobody. Can, well, I mean, you guys, you guys okay. know generally where he is, so you can attempt to, you know, to try to interact with him. Let's say, uh, however you. I thought she just made his backpack dark, not the whole room or anything. Well, it's a 15 foot diameter, I think it is, from 20 foot diameter, something like that, from okay. the backpack. Okay. So just okay. she's done it before. In fact, she did it with the owl bears. Uh, can I use my hat of disguise to look like? Is it Serafina? That. It's Sarah that is trying oh, yes. to take it away from you. Yes. Can I use my hat of disguise to make myself look like Serafina? You can spend your action to do so. It is your turn. Okay, well, but, uh, if that comes up. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Norok and, and uh, Artemy, though, you guys can't see anything. You just saw the room fill up with darkness. Uh, you can't see anymore. You do know about where Pogo was, but you know that Sarah was right next to him. So, you know, it's, it's what are you choosing to do? Not what I meant. Was I able to hear him draw his weapon? Was it audible? Yes. Um, but I heard them struggling. Yeah. Then I'm going to walk that way and try to, uh, obviously I can't see, but feel around and try to step in between them or, or push them apart or that kind of thing. Okay. You know, so. Um, it's a very, it's a cabin and your head is like, you already have to lean over to not, you know, put your head through the, <laughs> through the roof. Um, so it's a very awkward thing of trying to clamber through the darkness in this, in this tiny place, especially with the ship kind of rocking under your feet, you know. Uh, give me a dexterity check with disadvantage. Okay. In fact, just for simplicity's sake, go ahead and uh, Norok, Artemy, uh, give me uh, initiative rolls as well, in case it comes to it. Okay. Sorry, I should have had advantage on that, so I should have even it out on the initiative, but that's fine. Uh, you dropped an 18. I'm feeling so attacked right now. <laughs> well, you're, you're I said I was attacked, sorry. So. <laughs> yeah. she, she did apologize before trying to hit you. I'm picturing right now, I imagine Pogo's just got enough of the of this magic spell to where he's, he's a little wide-eyed and a bit crazy looking. Okay. He's not uh, a I mean, with, with all, yeah, one, the enthralling effect of the uh, of the arc on you, you would be trying to protect it with everything you have anyway, so it does make sense there. But also, you know, the, the, and I feel, everything that I feel like you. the more that happens to, the worse it gets, just forcing me to, to become extremely defensive. <laughs> okay. Um, Norok, you, you stumble your way forward and you feel two very small humanoids uh, and kind of just, just step between and kind of put, put a palm out on both sides. Uh, Pogo, there is a, a very a palm that is larger than your head pushing you away, like pushing you back against the, uh, uh, the like not hard, not, not enough to hurt you, but kind of your head is almost like pushed against the side of the cabin. Uh, Sarah, you're similarly being pushed back, so he is kind of inter interjecting himself between your space, uh, between the two of you. Uh, is Norok doing anything else? I mean, that would basically... Not in much. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do, is just try to keep them apart as much as I can for my... Yep. So... Uh, Samson is clearly exasperated. Like, you guys can't see anything, but you can hear him breathing and can tell just how, how frustrated he must be. Um, oh, I need to drop off those. Oh, I guess they're not... They would have dropped yet. Um, he, uh, he, he kind of stammers and, and, and then grumbles. Pogo, we're, we're trying to help you. You don't understand. This thing will, will take control of you if you let it... He's kind of, he's not trying to move, he can tell that he can hear by, by the struggling sounds and the movement uh, that others are moving, he doesn't want to move in between them. It's your turn, Pogo. Uh, alright. Well, I'm gonna tell them, it doesn't really seem like you're caring about my well-being that much right now. Uh, not really sure what's happening, but it feels a bit attacky. <laughs> that's, that's what it feels like to me. Um, I'm actually gonna drop on the ground since I can feel... Norox giant hand is pushing me away. I'm gonna try to 
maybe squeeze past him if I can. Okay. Uh, you can actually move through because uh, because you're technically small. Uh, you can move yeah. through a medium creature's space, so you basically can can hop down. You can't see his legs, so you still kind of bump into his knee. Um, and then I just gotta shuffle him. as quickly as possible on my hands and knees. Okay. Uh, okay, down on your hands and knees, then you actually go underneath that table. You feel table legs. You knew that the table was there, so you shuffle yourself down under underneath this this table. Um, it is Sarah's turn. You heard scurrying. You felt you, you felt uh, uh, Norok's hand push you you back slightly, uh, and then you heard scurrying. And you can tell the Pogo is trying to escape with the with the bag. Right. So, question: What in the hell is a python? It's in my inventory. It's a spike for climbing rocks. It's basically a python is uh, if you're rock climbing. Um, you've seen rock climbers before nail spikes into a, into a rock face, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. With an ads, so basically that's yeah. Python. It's for you. You would nail it in, climb up. You pull the if you can pull the previous one out, move up, nail it again, and rinse and repeat. So you make it up the wall. It's got a flat end on it, right? Yeah, it's got the, the side of you hammer is flat. It looks like a it looks like a railroad spike. Right. So since I can see Pogo crawling under the table, uh-huh. I will crawl under there and just very quietly. So hopefully he can't hear me. And hit him in the back of the head with the blunt side. With the blunt side? Try to knock him yes, out. Yes, with the, yes. Stab him. For a second there, I thought you were going to try to talk to me. And I was like, all right. And then, no, just hit him in the back of the head. All right. Uh, so um, go ahead and make an attack roll. You'll have advantage because he can't see you. Uh, with. Uh, roll a d20, and we're going to add your proficiency modifier and your dex modifier. You said with advantage? Yeah, with advantage. Oh, boy. So your proficiency is 3, your dex mod is 3, so plus 6, a 19 is out of 24. That beats your AC. Uh, Pogo, oh, yeah. you, you are cr- you're, you're like halfway underneath this table trying to crawl under there, holding the, the, the bag under your left arm. Uh, rapier still in your right hand as it's like clinking against the floor as you're moving yourself forward, hands and knees style. And then something very dense and, and very hard cracks you across the back of the skull. Uh, see, oh. by the way, Pogo's not very smart. He did not realize someone could still see him. <laughs> <laughs> he assumed everyone was blind yeah, in this he, scenario. <laughs> you, you would have had no way of knowing anyways. No, no uh, clue. Go ahead and give me a con save. Sarah, you could see, so I, you're going non-lethal, I assume, right? Yes, I'm just okay. trying to knock him out. Okay. Uh, the, the, the room was previously dark, but is immediately filled with these brilliant stars as you get cracked over the back of the head. Uh, you don't go unconscious, but it hurt like a motherfucker. Uh, Becky, roll, uh, roll a d10, and it'll be plus one strength. Uh, third from the right? Uh, third from the left. By the way, I'm pretty sure everyone heard me scream as I got hit in the back of the head by a ghost. Yeah, um, ah! uh, the hell was that? He is still crawling, uh, but you can see the, the uh, a wound open in the back of his head that is starting to spill blood down the, down the back of his neck. Uh, but like immediately, uh, you know, the hand off of the rapier reaches up and, and is, is, is kind of holding the wound on the back of his head. Still, left arm wrapped around the uh, uh, around the back. Uh, any bonus action? Can I use it to grab his rapier out of the way? Or kick it out of the way? Uh, as an item interaction, it's kind of, it, he's on the other side of you is the thing. He's like half underneath the table, so you'd have to be like around him. You'd have to crawl underneath the table as well, to the other side. Uh, which by Plus, then, since I just got hit in the back of the head by a ghost, I'm probably flailing all over the place. <laughs> well, I mean, it, I'm a kicker! <laughs> Uh, uh, so, but I would say probably not. Just because of where it is, it would be difficult to get around him and then move it away. Um, like, uh, you know what? Yeah, you can. I mean, you, there's there's enough space between the table isn't against the wall, so it's, it's close enough to the middle. You can kind of step over him since you can see. And just I'm also going to let you know, since I can't see anything, I'm not going to try to grab it again. I'm going to try to get the hell out of there. <laughs> I'm terrified. So, Someone's gonna take my beautiful thing away that I just found. And it's your very best friend, it really is. The, the, the thing that's in your arm yeah. is all you've ever wanted, and it's gonna make all of your, your dreams come true. I'm trying real hard to not make a Lord of the Rings impression that's, right now. No, it's very that's, difficult. That's the kind of enthrallment. That's, that's, like, that's exactly it. It's basically uh, Gollum with the ring. I'm gonna lose my freaking mind. <laughs> 
Alright, uh, so Sarah, you, you kind of hop over his, his feet where he's, you know, kind of on his hands and knees. You hop over his feet uh, to the other side and, and, and grab the rapier here and, uh, you know, pull it away. You've got it. Uh, are you holding on to it? Are you just tossing it away? Uh, just tossing it away, and I'm telling him that he'll feel so much better once he just hands it over. <laughs> you just hit me in the head, you ghost! Why would I miss the you? <laughs> Alright, Artemis' turn. You can't see anything, but you heard scurrying, and then you heard a thump, and then you heard Pogo yell "ow." And, and uh, by the and way, remember, I'm, I'm I'm still disguised as Seraphina. Oh shit! I didn't think about that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so you actually. I mean, she knew that I wasn't her, probably. Well, she's the only one that can see, and she you know, can see you turn into Sarah. So this is it's, it was a a, a a futile attempt, but interesting anyway. <laughs> So wait, I, I still can't see it. Nope. You just hear a clear a scuffle, a fight uh, going on with a thump and then Pogo yelling ow and, and you can hear him clambering across the floor. There's, there's a clinking of metal. Uh, Sarah threw the right here away, uh, but that's it. I'd probably just go kind of barricade the doors and you won't be able to get out but that's about it Um, i'm so i'm so glad at least all the rest of the sailors are still having fun around us (laughs) (laughs) they they probably could we're just in a weird fight in this room and they're all singing a song (laughs) oh you know what actually um (laughs) becky do me a favor real quick check darkness does it go around corners because you might have just fucked the navigation of the ship as well (laughs) You guys are under the wheel. You guys are under the quarter deck, which means that the sailor that's trying to steer the ship might not be able to see all of a sudden. <laughs> the good news is we're in the middle of the ocean, so the chance of him hitting shit is pretty <laughs> yeah, rare. That's fair. You're probably not going to crash. <laughs> not a lot going no, on. No, but I in think they would tanks. still be pretty freaked out up there. Oh, so sure. it's a 15 foot radius sphere, and it spreads around quarters. Okay, then in that case, it's. <laughs> Uh, maybe. Yeah, the, the, the halfling, uh, maybe. Well, the thing is, you guys are directly below the wheel. The captain's cabin is right oh. below the wheel. So if it's 15 feet up, you know, it's 15 foot uh, radius, so 15 foot up from where you guys are standing, it's a short ceiling. It's only like six and a half, seven feet tall for the ceiling, which is why Norak is, you know, having to lean down. Then it's covering the height of the halfling on the deck above. <laughs> so he definitely cannot see at all. Whoops. So there's, there's you know, a little bit of panic coming from around upstairs. Uh, you guys hear footsteps. Uh, Artemis, uh, you hear a pounding on the door, uh, shouting, is everything okay? Is everything okay? Uh, but, of course, you knew basically where the door was anyways. As soon as you kind of hands out in front of you start wandering towards the door, uh, you feel a steel breastplate that's a little bit warm. Uh, you, you can tell that that's Sans in there. Um, and then your other hand touches the door right behind you. Sorry, what was that? You you stumbled into uh, Samson and then found the door. Okay. Samson is right in front of the door as well. Okay, I guess that's all I do for now. Okay, you're just gonna stand in front of the door, and make sure that nobody can get out. Yeah. Uh, you um, did hear, you did hear the... sailors asking, "Is everything okay?" Oh, I would just call back. Yep. Okay. Distilling enchanted <laughs> item situation. We're fine. Okay. Everything's fine. Um, uh, would I still be able to heal Norok and Pogo without being able to see them, or just to make sure like they don't die? <laughs> well, I mean, Sarah was attempting to do non-lethal damage, so if she if she does knock him out. No, but they were still pretty heavily damaged from yeah. the other fight. Yeah, they they hadn't been healed. Both Norok and, and uh, uh, Sarah, or Norok and Artemis actually. Sarah had a sorry, Norok and Pogo. Uh, Sarah had a small amount of damage, but Norok and Pogo both were pretty beat up. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and use healing word on each of them. Okay. Um, you can still. You have to see them for healing word. Oh, okay. So I, I, I'll I don't do, know. I'm checking right now. I'm not sure. Uh, I'll do inspiration recovery to get my second slot spell. I think it would be, and then second slot spell for it. Yeah, and then I'll just use uh healing. Spell. Okay. All right. So. Uh, does that emit light, I wonder? Does the human spirit spit out light? Not that I know. Uh, it, would, it wouldn't work through magical darkness anyways, I imagine. So, yeah, it wouldn't matter. Okay. In this particular case, uh, I, I think it probably does emit like a small green glow, but uh, you guys can't see it because they're in magical darkness anyway. So, healing spirit pops up into the middle of the room. Uh, it is near enough that it's basically touching everybody. So go ahead and, if you would, roll the heal on, uh, on everybody. Okay. Alright, and then we will come back around to 
Norok's turn. Uh, Norok, the the halfling on your left uh, <laughs> clambered around your leg. You felt him bump into your knee. Uh, then you heard a, a loud clubbing sound uh, as as uh, uh, he got whacked in the back of the head, presumably by Sarah, who you felt kind of dance around your back as well. Uh, you still can't see anything. You're basically you're facing what you imagine is an empty wall, like that kind of sense of, of having an idea of a room even in the darkness. You can tell that the, the space in front of you is empty. Both the halflings have moved. What are you doing? All right, then I'm going to... Um, yeah, I should probably do the same thing that uh, part of my day didn't head over towards the door. I don't know if I could have seen her, but I would have thought about that afterwards, too. So I probably would feel around the door. Or can I see where it is, or is that outside of the sphere? Oh, everything. is that, everything. You can't see anything at all. One, even if you were in the middle of it, you wouldn't be able to see out anyways, but the whole room is, is full of darkness. In the room that we were in, did uh, I notice that there was more than one way in and out, or so was there just one door? There's only the one door. Okay. Captain, then Captain, I, there, there are windows. So, okay. Uh, they don't open, but there are windows. Okay. Um, yeah, then I will head, feel my way towards the door. So, okay. and then see if I can block it so that way, and uh, yeah, block it as much as I can so little people don't try to run out. Okay. So. You follow the little side. people. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you stumble your way towards towards the doorway, uh, you know, using the sound of the sailors beating on the door, uh, or knocking on the door, and, and Artemir responding as a, as a guide, and you make your way there. You do similarly kind of stumble into Samson, who is holding the discs. Uh, you hear them clatter together, uh, and then you kind of stand in the way there. Uh, Samson is, is just calling out, Pogo, we're, we're trying to help you. I know it may not seem like that. We're, we're, we're not trying to hurt you, I promise. Just Fake please. news! <laughs> Don't believe it! <laughs> it's your turn. What are you doing? Uh, so first, I'm gonna kick behind me to whatever ghost thing tried to beat me over the head. Okay. Uh, roll, so d- roll a d20 with this. Well, click disadvantage, and then it's gonna be a uh, uh, an unarmed or a, what's what I'm looking for? Unarmed attack, uh, like a punch, basically, or a punch or a kick. Uh, so it's just gonna be a flat d20, and you are not proficient with that, so no proficiency, but plus your dex mod, which is seven. Jesus. No, that's a do six. I so, do okay. I roll? Two on disadvantage, or to roll one well, at a time. You click bottom left corner. You see where there's ADV and dis. Yep, got dis. Click dis so that it's highlighted, and then just got grab one d20 and then roll it in the box. Oh, all right. Hold on then. And it'll be plus four. All right. Oh, what? Nope. Hold on. There we go. Oh, I missed the box. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Six. Oh, that's a uh, brutal. And you dropped a 19, too. You actually had been rolling. Uh, uh, you, you kick open air, uh, almost kicking the wall. Uh, nothing you can tell, of course, but uh, you kick open air. Sarah, you, you saw a foot kind of jab out towards you uh, in your direction. You just kind of you weren't even in you know danger of being hit. It wasn't even close to hitting you. And then I'm going to crawl towards where I believe the door is. Okay. All right. Uh, there's, there's like, the, the, cha- the cabin isn't big enough. You know, for that to be a problem, you can make it even with your 15 feet because you're, uh, you know, half moving when you're crawling. Uh, sure. But you crawl towards the doorway and immediately bump into knees of all kinds. Ah! One, you know, <laughs> uh, like you're just bumping in through, uh, you know, for Norok's sake, more of Shin. Uh, but then the knees of both Artemis and and, uh, and Samson are in front of you. One of them is metal and one of them smells nice. Uh, but there's there's six knees in front of you basically before a doorway. Sarah's turn. Ah. Uh. You see wait, wait, wait. Can I do a bonus action? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you going to vicious mockery somebody? No, 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 no. Uh, let's see if I can do this real quick. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to use the gem of seeing as a bonus <laughs> action. Okay. And I'm going to hold the gem up to my eye so I can see through this, whatever this black fog is. There you go. All right. I, I totally forgot about that. Uh, he has an item, guys, that uh, he can speak the gem's command word, which is... Well, I guess he speaks which the is word. Which is... Hocus Pocus is not that great of a movie. <laughs> That's a really oh, awful what? <laughs> Yeah, I thought so. would get upset there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hence the biggest mockery built in as well. I hate Ben Midler. Um... I pretty much. I don't think there's anybody See? I actually like in that movie. I don't remember I can't name name anyone don't. besides that Midler in that uh, movie. There's the blonde that may or may not be attractive in real life. That's the only other one. I don't know who that is. Exactly. <laughs> uh, all right. So for ten minutes, though, he has true sight uh, out to 120 feet. 
uh, which of course includes seeing through magical darkness. So, okay. <laughs> uh, while he's basically Sarah, you see him clambering forward on hands and knees till he bumps into some kneecaps. Um, and then he's still holding the uh, vase under his left hand. He kind of stands himself up, still on his knees, but kind of stands up a little bit. Uh, and then pulls the gem out of a pocket and holds it over one eye. Uh, both hand, basically one hand holding the vase or the, the, the bag, the other hand holding this gem up over his eye while he's looking forward. Uh, you see that you're basically standing, uh, or that you're <clears throat> uh, in front of the doorway, of course, but uh, Norok on your left, Samson in the middle, and Artemis on your right, blocking the way through the door. Sarah's turn. Yep, that's in the my turn. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so can I assume that he's using this gem to see? Uh, he's holding it over an eye. You can probably gather that that's, you know, and, and you do, I would say that you probably saw the subtle reaction of, like, his head, you know, he's moving his head back slightly as soon as he realizes that he just bumped into people. All right, then I'm going to drop darkness. Okay. <clears throat> oh! So, don't forget, I else still look like Serafina. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So... Uh, you know what? Okay, that might be confusing for the others. Pro- well, probably because yeah. you're holding a bag under your shoulder, under your arm, so it'll probably give you away. Uh, I got the bag. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> In my best, I got the bag. Let's go. Okay. Uh, I've got it. <laughs> with, with the performance, you might be able to pull that off. Uh, Sarah, you see, you know, a a, a small ver- or a, 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 a kneeling version of you. Uh, near the door, um, Norok and Artemis, you guys immediately with the darkness falling, uh, can now see another Sarah in front of you in the, like, classic, this is, this is in, like, every <laughs> third movie from the 80s sense of, of there now being two Seraphinas and one of them having a, <clears throat> a bag under a shoulder. Uh, make a performance check on Pogo and give me a, an insight check on Norok and Artemis. <laughs> not with that. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm seeing doubles. Yeah. I've, 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 that's, he's made it look like <laughs> he was me. And I just trying to leave. <laughs> I've got it in the back. Uh, there we go. Okay. Artemis got a natural 20. So, so oh. Artemis is able to see through it. Uh, to Artemis, you're sure. Okay. This is this. I would say that this is where the dispute would come in. Norok, you 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 believe her, the the Pogo or the uh, the Sarah that's that's uh, holding the bag. Artemis, you you're sure that that's Pogo. That he's okay. He's, uh, he's trying to uh, hide it. Who's who? No. So I'm, uh, I'm Sarah. Uh, Sarah, it's your turn. You see uh, Norok kind of stepping aside. He's beginning to move out of the way, uh, believing that the, the one on the floor is hit is you. Uh, Artemis is, is like kind of moving in, in the way, like in front of uh, uh, Samson. What are you doing? All right, so I'm just going to look at Norok and be like, big guy, don't you dare move. <laughs> and then I'm going to turn to Pogo and just be like, I'm really, really sorry, and I hope when this is over you can forgive me, and I'm going to use Ray of Frost. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're gonna kill him. The, is there a splash? Because if there's any splash damage, you're gonna end up hitting people. Uh, I don't think yeah, I don't so. Know. That just slows him, right? Uh, it's 1d8 cold damage, and it slows him by 10 feet. Okay, well, he's. I mean, just, down, he may have 5 feet of movement while he's still on his knees. Um, it just has a creature within range. Okay. All right, so it's it's a thin enough beam you can manage to, to hit just him without hitting anybody else. Uh, there isn't anybody else between you, anyways. Uh, go ahead and make the uh, and make the attack roll. Uh, Twenty-two. That definitely hits. Go ahead and roll the damage. Damage. And then. <laughs> uh, Poke, you square in the back, like between the shoulder blades. Feel this this uh, uh, beam of frost uh, just kind of burn. Oh, it's like, so like, cold! Like, uh, and you are like immediately arms like pulling up. Norak, save me! <laughs> <laughs> save me, Norak! <laughs> that's, that's good. Um, but you're like uh, arms like lifting up that kind of you know somebody something like a, dropping an ice cube down like down the back of your shirt kind of feel uh, where your arms kind of scrunch up back where you're kind of pushing your shoulder blades together still holding the vase under your arm but you can you bring the uh, the gem down you can you can realize you can see now you don't like you know the gem may have solved the darkness somehow uh, that it for Sarah's turn. Becky. No, it, it, she said to let me out. <laughs> ben, can you guys hear me? All right, their network must have dropped or something. Oh no! 
Uh, I'm gonna assume that's her. Well, I'm sure they'll pop back in here in a second as soon as they're back. Cause I can't sure. But since they both dropped at the same time, it's probably their internet went down. <laughs> yeah, they're disconnecting now. Okay. Uh, Artemis, uh, what you doing, Fox? Um. So he's in front of us, right? And I'm very cold. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there, there's a Sarah uh, on the floor, the one that you're sure is Pogo, uh, on like on his knees on the floor. Um, and is like slowly trying to move forward, but basically, yeah, he's, he's in front of you, and Samson is to your right, and Norak is further to the right. And behind the one on the floor is the other Sarah. Okay. I would say sorry and hit him with my first step, <laughs> non lethal, just trying to knock him up. Okay, we're trying I to do appreciate it. how polite <laughs> everyone is. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> uh, yo, okay, that was okay. Good. Okay. Uh, Becky, you're back too. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. All right. <laughs> back uh, to I, yes, I'm Becky. also I'm back as well, Sarah. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Bye. There is okay. no problem. Uh, what I said was that was a horrible impression, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was enough to fool Norok, so. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Um, but uh, uh, you see then, Sarah, you, you're kind of, you blasted him in the back, or her in the back with the Ray of Frost, uh, and Artemis says, uh, sorry about this, and then just kind of steps forward and just tries to club across the head with her uh, with her quarter staff. Uh, go ahead and make the uh, attack roll, Fox. Uh, I just... Are you shillelaying, or are you just using your, just a flat quarter staff? I could probably shillelay. Okay. It's a bonus action anyway, so you could... In that case, uh, where your shillelagh is, use that attack roll. Am I the only person who thinks shillelagh sounds like a black Irish name? <laughs> you gotta make the attack roll first, Fox. Oh, right. Hit the cast button. I'll take the oh, one. Oh! <laughs> well, it's still four damage, but... Uh, uh, which, I mean, keep in mind, by the way... Uh, oh. Wait, was that the right one? Yeah, you did. You did it right. Uh, you guys didn't have him targeted, so... Uh, oh, oops. Keep in oh. mind, though, guys, uh, Fox, you healed him of, of his wounds, <laughs> so he's yeah. fully healed again, and you guys are still standing inside of the range of the healing spirit, so it's going to keep healing him back, even though you guys are trying to, like, knock him out or something. You're, you're, you're going to keep healing him if you leave your healing spirit up. Beat him for that. Technically, unconsciousness isn't something, like, you'd heal away. We don't want him to die. We just want him unconscious. But to get him unconscious, you have to beat through his HP. Yeah. And then we can uh, heal him. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I'll drop my feelings. <laughs> uh, I'm getting out of this room! <laughs> uh, you, you keep trying, that's for sure. All right, so... Uh, well, I would have dropped it after healing them because I didn't... Okay. Well, you then, then we'll say that you healed the, the wounds from the, uh, you know, from it was left over from the ship, basically. Uh, how much was yeah. the damage from the, the clubbing from the... Uh, it was a three, so it was a total of six. Alright, so it's yeah. 19. There we go. Alright, he's... Uh, and I didn't... didn't the what? damage from Ray of Frost isn't on him either. I, I just applied it. Yeah, he's at 19 total damage now. I just applied the the damage from the, the uh, quarterstaff and the Ray of Frost, and the clubbing from the uh, pitten, from the railroad spike pitten. Alright, uh, now we're back around to Norok's turn. So you can see again Norok, and in front of you is this, like, you don't understand why they're clubbing this, because to you, you're sure. I mean, you, you I'm, saw, you saw I'm one Sarah. I'm Serafina! <laughs> you saw one Sarah who's further away from you and standing up, and, and she says, don't you let him out of here, big guy, while the one that's on the floor who you believe is the right... You should let me out of here, big guy! <laughs> Is uh is being clubbed over the head and hit in the back and then being pretty pretty I'm ugly of you. Just I'm just a girl and people are hitting me. I don't understand. Why are you doing this? Uh, my memory is terrible, but I'm pretty sure by now Seraphina has shown Norok that her hand is fucked up, right? At least her hand and part of her arm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause right, how much should I see? All right, then I'm, I'm going to, the, the one that's uh, getting beat up, I'm going to reach down with both hands around the wrists and try to attempt to pick that one up. That's and smart. if my, 
And, and if I can, then I'm going to restrain that one at both arms as well. Okay. I'm just going to keep holding, holding that not, one. So. Yeah, Pogo has not noticed that yet, so... Yeah. Uh, actually, <laughs> so... He kind of noticed, like, yeah. He, he actually did notice on the broom ride back, specifically the very end of, of the last session. Yeah. The problem is, is that you can't make your arm Oh, I can't. Appear. can't make it you, appear, you can, so. You can make yep. it... Like, I can feel it. it appear like it's not there, but when he actually grabbed your arm, <laughs> then he would feel your arm there, so... 100%. So, so Norak reaches down, grabs both your wrists, <laughs> I would say that go ahead and make a contested roll, uh, assuming that you're trying to like shrug your way out of this. But Pogo, uh, well, you know what? Actually, you have an advantage on being grappled. We're gonna call this a grapple. Uh, oh yeah. A, make um, make a strength check with advantage on Norok and a with, well, it's gonna be advantage for both of you, I guess. So it would be a okay. roll. Uh, so both of you make give me a strength check. Uh, actually, sorry, Pogo, yours can be a Dex if you choose to, which Dex would be better. For you. Yeah. Uh, 15. Bad, damn it. Just a flat roll, strength checking. <sighs> nope. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Jeez, no. That a fucking Stop grabbing me! Uh, Stop <laughs> grabbing my hands! Uh, you did feel, though, that his arms are there, um, but he, but the Sarah, the Pogo Sarah, uh, shrinks up out of it and pulls, pulls his arms free of your big hands. Uh, so you just you, like you couldn't hold or you couldn't hold on to to uh, the, the slippery uh, pogo. Any bonus action? Sure. Um, should I have had advantage? Should I have clicked advantage on that one since I had disadvantage and made it flat? Because I didn't. Well, because I just thought that we were just going against each other. So yeah, the thing is, he would have advantage too, so it would, it would kind of neutralize that. Yeah. So it would have been it would have been just like you guys just rolled it basically, if that makes sense. Because you would have okay, both so had my... advantage, and he didn't roll his with advantage. You rolled yours with. Uh, yeah, I had, still, I had disadvantage. Yeah, you'd still. But I have my exhaustion though too. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. It. Okay. So, yeah, Just making sure. It's a fair roll, like it is. Oh. So, um, um, I'm not going to say anything. So I think everybody else realizes which one is real and which one's not. So <laughs> I'm not even going to say anything. Cool. Yeah, I finally had to figure it out for myself. So <laughs> you have now figured it out. So uh, I, I think Samson might still be a little fooled. Uh, you know what? Actually, I didn't. Hang on. Let me let me see. I did not have him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Samson's still confused. Uh, what was your your roll was like a twenty three or some shit, right? It was ridiculous. Yeah. Twenty. So he got a fourteen. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, uh, twenty seven was mine. Yeah. Uh, so he actually would have like believed it or been confused at least long enough until he sees Norak try to grab your arm. Actually, hang on, uh -huh. hang on. No. Yeah, because Samson doesn't know. Samson doesn't know, so he's oh, he's yeah. confused, uh, and Good. like he, in fact, actually, he just backs up. He says, he says, look, I, I realize that both of you are capable of this kind of of, uh, of illusion, but just whoever is the real Pogo, we're we're really trying to help you. You cannot hold on to this thing, and not only is is, is the, the the risk for what it would do to you, but for what you holding on to it will do to to the others, the, the, the thousands that we need to save back there. I just I'm pleading with you, please, just just give it up. And that's it for his turn. It's your turn. <laughs> well, that's not gonna work at all, <laughs> Samson. Ah, uh, all right. Ah, uh, let's see. <laughs> you know, he. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's see. How do I? Without a battle tracker, how do I? Okay, wait. Can I can't do it. Tracker. How do I? How do I? Uh. Cause I'm, I'm gonna I'm trying to get out of this room I don't I don't like being in this room with all these people trying to take my best friend away from me yeah <laughs> so how do I target the people in front of the door I'm trying to do uh, uh, targeting like a front word targeting spell here okay uh, you know what here I'll, I'll, just, target you, people. We, I'll go ahead and bring the map back up I'll share the map to you guys you can just do it on oh, the map. Um, so I just shared that to you let me put you guys on the map here real quick um, this is really t uh, close quarter so you're you know it's, it's gonna be Pretty dense in here. Sure. Shrink it, buddy. Down to the right size again. Sarah, there. Sorry, everybody, for the inconvenience. <laughs> but I need to cast a spell on y'all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Samson is directly in front of the door, and Artemé is off to his side. Ooh, let's see go. if this would work. So there's barely enough room, as you can see. Uh, Samson is actually like. So that's the door right there. Do you see the door? Sure. Okay, so Samson is basically just back. He's, like, legit right in front yeah, of the door. He's, he's backed up against the door. There are 
Um, you did hear more scurrying in the hallway, and you you gather that it was walking away. So the sailors that came to the door and were in the darkness probably left the door. Uh, the darkness is now gone, of course, but it doesn't sound like there's anybody in the hallway. So, I... Can you tell me if this would hit all three of them? I, I, I'm almost out of spell slots. But uh, I have two more second level, and Tasha's hideous laughter happens to be one of them. So if I target all three of them, would this hit them? It's a cone going out for... Uh, hold on. What does it say? So... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, it's only one. It's only one creature. Yeah, it targets one creature on a thirty-four. So, I'm gonna target Samson. Okay. With Tasha's hideous laughter. Okay. And so first I hit to cast, right? Well, first target. Okay, you haven't targeted yet. So hit the cast button, mm-hmm. and that'll roll his save. Uh, he got a natural seven for a total of nine. He failed. All right. So then I put the effect on him. Yep. Man, two weeks, and I just fucking. <laughs> It's it's such a ridiculous. I forget program. like how to do everything. Yeah, but it's okay. a huge program. It takes it takes some, some time to get used to. Uh, so now he's just laughing. I'm sorry. He's uh, now he's just laughing. Uh, did you did you tell him a joke while you were at it? Uh, I said your armor makes you look like a old Chevy convertible. You ugly mutt. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then you- I. Uh, against his, his his wishes, clearly, like he's he's laughing in spite, like it's it's an angry laugh. Uh, but he does uh, kind of begin to fall over and like knee slap, and then collapse onto the floor and like roll over onto his back and is laughing, Ho- still holding the discs. He's got the discs over his chest, um, and it's kind of kicking around and laughing. Go ahead and uh, click the, actually click all three of the effects because one of them is going to be for you for the concentration being up, and then him being prone and incapacitated, and the other two that will apply to him since you haven't targeted. Okay, and then I'm going to run out of the room! Okay, uh, you are slowed by Ray of Frost, uh, so you need to stand up, because you were, you were, you know, okay. prone. You have to stand up, which is going to take basically half of your movement, which is normally 25 feet, bringing it down to 15 feet, minus 10 is from the Ray of Frost, means you have 5 feet of movement, which means that you can basically ah. stand on top. Uh, he's not, he's not uh, hostile to you at the moment, but you can basically stand on, po- or on, uh, like, basically stomp up onto the uh, the discs that, that Samson is holding on his chest right now, and that's it. You basically can reach to the door, like, touch the door, and that's that's as far as you can make it for the moment. Yeah, that's pretty much all I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna stand here, very cold. Uh, you're still disguised as Sarah, unless you've changed that. Yep. So, okay. All right. Sarah's heard. All right. Um, realizing that talking to him is just getting us nowhere. <laughs> I'm just going to continue to hit him with Ray of Frost. <laughs> yeah, kick his ass. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Oh. Well, I have no spell slots left and no sorcery points left. All I have is cantrips. <laughs> yeah, you guys you guys were really burned on resources. Like, you, you pretty much spent yeah. what you had out there. So, Alright, so... Okay, Ray of Frost again. Uh, uh, where is he? I think if you don't oh. do that, he'll have his full movement again anyway, so... Right? Yeah. Doesn't it fall off after each round? I believe so, yes. So. Uh, oh! Yes. <laughs> Probably! <laughs> uh, oh. Oh, shit! Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so this, this is a little extra uh, step here. This is the first time that uh, uh, Pogo's gotten to see this, I think. Um, you reach for the doorknob and and because remember uh, Samson had closed it behind him of course uh, so you reach for the doorknob um, and go to, go to open the doorknob and just as you do uh, you get blasted in the back again with that freezing bolt uh, and immediately your, your focus on holding the, the laughter spell is dropped uh, you, you feel Samson begin to stir underneath you you're, you feel like you're about to be thrown off of him as he tries to stay stand, stand his way back up uh, is that it for Sarah um, I'm just gonna tell him that he needs to stop the other me. <laughs> Never! <laughs> <laughs> and he can't seriously think that that one would be able to help you fight off a hound of darkness. No! I'm you! Hounds of darkness! Yes! <laughs> that thing! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pogo has no idea what you're talking about, but it's still pretty cute. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alright, Artemis turn. Uh, Pogo just got blasted in the back. Uh, he's standing on, on uh, Sam, uh, stirring Samson's chest uh, and trying to make it through the door. What are you doing? 
Uh, I'm gonna use my braided green lash to kind of wrap it around him and pull him backwards. Okay. Um, let's see. Is it, I think it was just an attack that you can use if they if you make the attack or if the attack hits right. Yeah. Oh, I didn't. Where the info There it is. Okay. It's on the weapon itself. You scroll to the top. Uh, uh, if the target is large or smaller, you can trip them. Uh, must succeed on a DC 14 strength save or be knocked around. Are you trying to tie him up? Because like basically, if you're trying to use it to restrain him, that's different. But if you're if you're going to hit him and then trip him, you can just kind of whip him around the ankles uh, with it and try to pull his feet out from under. Yeah, I think Doing that's that. what I'm going to try to do. Go ahead and make the attack roll. You throw your shillelagh back over your. Over <laughs> your oh no. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, the special effect is actually knee hit. Uh, in addition to standard critical, your target's leg... Well, okay. <laughs> Obviously, we're not going to do this, but... In addition to the standard critical damage, your target's leg is cut off at the knee, slashing weapon, oh! or falls prone, and the knee is broken with a blunt weapon. Uh, so you could have broken his knee, <laughs> basically. Uh, this might be... Like, by the way, I gotta say, this is maybe, like, maybe the third time that Artemis has ever rolled a crit in <laughs> all of Embers. And it just happens to be yeah. on another party member. She's gonna kill him. <laughs> Dead. Uh, Alright, go ahead and go ahead. <laughs> Do I have to target him or is he already targeted? Uh, he is not targeted, so go ahead and target him. There you go. Mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting to have some PvP in today's game. <laughs> I told you! <laughs> I'm not giving up my best friend! <laughs> oh, there's nothing for the attack. Uh, it's all the way at the top, box. It's under weapons. Oh. Very, very first thing at the top. The 1d6 plus 3 slash. Uh, oh, okay. That should have been double. Well, the 3 should have been double, so it'll be a total of 9 uh, damage. Uh, you have 7 HPs left for Pogo. <laughs> Uh, and also, you're knocked prone. So, so uh, Artemy kind of steps back slightly, and you see her uh, with her left hand throw the quarterstaff up over her back, and then grab at her hip with her right hand. And you feel this this uh, whip kind of wrap her. Oh, you actually didn't apply the necrotic damage too. Fuck. Oh. Okay. Uh, the the kind of whip tail uh, wraps around your ankles and yanks your feet out from under you. You go face planting, like nose smashes into the disc on Samson's shoulder on a on his chest. Um, Go ahead and do the lash bite under. Oh, actually, you would have done that before you roll the damage box. So just roll a d4 for me, and I'll just apply it manually. But actually, this will be double too, so it might be enough to knock him out, depending on how high you roll. Four is uh, the first far right. One. First one on the right. Uh, no, for a total of four. <laughs> Thinking you have three hit points left, Fogo. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you, you've been uh, <laughs> with cold and then smacked and then uh, smacked with a, with a, a club, uh, smacked with a, a, a pitten, and then uh, the, the, you know smashing your face into to the chest of the or the, the, the death the uh, arc discs, the plates that Samson's holding. Norik's turn. All right, so all right, so uh, he's got. I'm, I'm can tell by looking at him that he looks like he's a. Uh, Pretty roughed up, right? Yeah, he's he's really beat up for sure. <laughs> 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 all right then. Um, all right then. Uh, what I will do is just, uh, I guess, punch him in the head and see if I can knock him out non-lethal. So non -lethal. And I'll hit him twice if I have to. So and I'll just do an unarmed strike though, just to make sure that I don't hurt him too bad. So. Uh, okay, go ahead and make an attack roll. Well, if I if I hit him with a non-lethal and I do like a ton of extra damage, it's not going to actually go become lethal, right? If you roll a natural twenty and you roll too high, yeah, you can actually kill. Then him. I'm just I'm just going to punch him then because I don't want to fucking yeah, bash his head open or something. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> I mean, you guys. Um, well, okay. I put it this way: you, you could actually kill him if you over if you did too much damage. Like if you tried to use like, okay. great weapon master and shit like that, then yeah, you could definitely kill him. <laughs> yeah, kick his ass. That ain't gonna work. What the hell, dude? <laughs> you what the fuck is wrong? <laughs> okay. Um, 
So you you uh, <laughs> kind of kneel down and and in all in this one motion, kind of fall down to one knee and just try to try to you know bring a, a fist down into the back of his head, trying to knock him out. Uh, but Pogo <laughs> is struggling with the the whip that's around his ankles, like flailing left and right, and you just punch square into Samson's chest, and, <laughs> uh, right into these steel plates that he's holding on to, uh, with this loud ringing sound, and Samson just groans like like in, in you know anger and pain. Uh, go ahead yep. and roll, uh, roll an unarmed strike against uh, Samson. Okay. Uh, just the damage? You just roll the damage. I'll apply it to Samson for you. Okay. Oh, come on. Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I roll a good one? All right. There we go. All right. Uh, are you trying to punch him again? Yeah, I was trying to hit Pogo, of course, not Samson this time, hopefully. I'm not! I'm not Pogo! <laughs> <laughs> I'm Serafina! Oh, you're hitting a girl. You just punched Serafina in the side of the head, like Temple. Uh, go ahead and go and roll the damage on it. I don't think you, with your modifier, I don't think you could do less than. I just want to make sure you don't. Well, you didn't roll a natural 20, so you'd be fine, anyways. Okay. Yeah. So you, uh, <laughs> you, you punch the struggling Serafina square in the side of the head. Uh, no! who, who kind of slips like with with the uh, with the force of the punches is kind of flung into the door and then slumps down like barely between the, the tiny amount of space between Samson laying down and the door on his other side. Uh, and Samson kind of immediately reaches over to our next anyways, uh, reaches over and grabs the uh, uh, the thing. That, that it, again, it's about the size of like a tall style um, flower vase, but it's shaped like a like a tower, like a granulated tower. Um, and he, he grabs it and, and pulls it free of the bag and immediately kind of kind of rolls back over to his left, uh, away from Pogo. Uh, and, and he's like starting to kind of struggle to get himself up. Uh, <clears throat> he, he kind of grumbles it at, uh, at Norok. He says, Jesus, it, that w- why'd you... Like, and he's just in a still uh, stammering over that uh, as, he, as he stands up. He says, can we... Artemis, can you maybe tie him up just in case? Sure. Uh, go ahead and give me a uh, just a probably a dex, uh, probably sleight of hand actually. Uh, go ahead and roll it with advantage from the practice you've been making with your sleight of hand. Okay. You don't have proficiency yet, but uh, you know, with, with just some practice from that. Uh, Pogo, you um, because it was non-lethal. I'd say, well, you know what? You're still until they kind of wake you up. You are you are unconscious, but but tied. Uh, as soon as she ties is finished tying him up, I'll use the ring of healing surges. Okay. I was All gonna right. use healing word. Are you like are, is he hog tied like face down, ankles and feet together, or wrists and uh, ankles together, or like tied up, just hands and ankles, like sitting you know against the wall, like a like a prisoner tie up, something like that. I would have got the chair, tied him to the chair, to the like, chair, okay, tied, and then uh, <laughs> hands bun. Okay. Uh, all right, so Pogo, you you come to, um, knowing that your best friend. Does this count as a long point. rest? <laughs> <laughs> you you are out for like maybe ninety seconds. <laughs> Not quite long rest. Of them. All right. Uh, but um, and I'm gonna say this only because nobody mentioned it, so I don't want to. I don't want to. She. Uh, you know what? I'm not gonna say anything. Never mind. Um, but specifically, you guys tied him to the chair, hands behind his back, uh, you know, ankles tied to the chair as well, so he can't really get off of the chair. Uh, but he is basically sitting uh, in, a, in a chair that was uh, knocked away previously, but has now stood back up by the table. Um, and Samson is on the table in front of you, taking your very best friend, um, and he's got these discs that, he, that he's Wait, kind Wait, of... hang on. Um, we would have seen him fight, right? We would have seen um, Pogo fight a bit, right? And we would have... Would we have heard him say some of the spells and, like, that hit sure. the enemies? Tasha's hideous laughter. I'm not sure what you mean, Fox. Because if we would have noticed his style of fighting, I would have gagged him. Okay. <laughs> so you hadn't said that yet, and that's actually what I was what I was kind of carefully dancing around, is you didn't say that you had gagged him. I've got one spell slot left! Techni- <laughs> so technically, it would be Pogo's turn next. You are still tying him. I'll say that you still are, like... You know, just behind him, so you'll be you basically Pogo will have one action, and then not even a bonus action. He's he's tied, so he's not going to have like a full turn. Oh, uh, but I wouldn't have even used Ring of Healing Surges until he was fully set up. The gagging is the problem. Nobody said anything about the gagging until after yeah. you'd already said you were okay. waking him up. Yeah. Um, so specifically, conscious one HP, 
Uh, you guys could easily knock him right back out again if you needed to. Uh, <laughs> also, I'm, you know I'm no actually, longer yeah. disguised. Uh, actually, I just read yeah, the, the, disguise. The, disguise, the disguise would have fallen now, so it looks like Pogo again. But actually, Becky, uh, it's when you use the Ring of Healing Surges, do they use their hit dice? Yes. Okay, so... Uh, allow your judge to spend one hit die. So, uh, Pogo, do me a favor, go to your... Um, main page on your actions tab, or your main page on, on your character sheet, uh, very bottom where it says HD and it says 5 to the right of that, double click that once. Double click the die, there you go. Alright, so he's got 6. Bam! Um, That's plenty. <laughs> uh, and you you come come to uh, with Sarah's hand on your shoulder, uh, the, 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 the your best friend, the, the crenellated tower in front of you on the table. Uh, Samson is like a, a building this device around it, it looks like. Uh, Artemis is directly. In fact, let me move these just in case. Uh, can I can I talk to Norak real quick? Um, <laughs> real quick, can we take like a two minute break because Destiny's sick and we need to take her outside to go. Party. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Sure. All right, thanks. In that case, I'm gonna go make a drink. Did okay, yes. Bring the bottle Back in like five. Yeah, no problem. Dude. No, I did, but I didn't bring the mixers. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, quick break, everybody. Okay. Oh, I'm fine. I'm actually, what's funny is I got up to walk around and I think I'm more drunk than I thought I was. <laughs> S just sitting in a chair kind of makes you forget. Then you yeah. try to go to the bathroom and you're like, oh! Are the doctors going to bark no. at you for your, you know, overdoing it so much all of a sudden? Uh, probably not. Um, I, mostly because two Sundays ago I went out drinking with some friends and... I do my tests on Monday, and they said everything looked great. So if I can go out the day before, because I forgot, and normally I wouldn't do that, but it was fine. Nice. Although the more I drink, the harder it is to get out of this accent. <laughs> I was curious about that too. You don't really need nope. to be doing the accent right now. This <laughs> is just who I am now. <laughs> well, Hope you like enjoy it. it. <laughs> Uh, was that more entertaining than you thought it was going to be? Way more entertaining than I thought it was going to be. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting any PvP. Well, well I, I told you, I'm not going to give it up. Yeah. This is my best friend. <laughs> what, Becky? I said I didn't know what else to do. Okay. It was the only spell slot I had left. <laughs> uh, can I just say, what was it? What part really... The part where uh, uh, Norak grabbed both arms knowing that I didn't really know about the other arm. Mm -hmm. That was smart. 
That was a smart choice. Well, so Norok is actually not a dumb guy anyways. Like, generally, you know, a big dumb barbarian, you kind of everybody expects him to be stupid. Uh, he's actually, intelligence is actually 10, so he's, he's just average intelligence, he's slightly more wise than uh, than average. All right. He's, he's basically so, a 10 and a 12. He, he rolled very well on that, his initial yeah. character creation. He's got good stats. <laughs> but as far as, like, narratively, though, he, you know, the, the, the character would probably get the um, prejudice part of it that most people would probably expect him to be dumb, uh, but but Norok isn't really a dumb character. That's just kind of uh, the, the reputation that he might have, the errant reputation. Um, ben is, is, how long do you think he'll be back? He should only be a couple of minutes. Okay. She's... She's been sick for a couple days, and when she's got to go, she's got to go now. Yeah. Would uh, Would you like to hear more of a song that I have prepared? <laughs> is, this, is this another mermaid about a fishtail? It's actually continuing the mermaid song. Okay. I haven't finished the song. Let's hear the next verse. <laughs> All right, hold on. Let's see. I signed on to a sailing ship, my very first day at sea. I seen a mermaid in the waves, a reaching out to me. Okay, I can't do it, because now all I have is this other shanty stuck in my head. Oh, Hold yeah, on. I lost that one for you. Hold on. There you go. <laughs> Come live with me in the sea, said she, down on the ocean floor. And I'll show you a million wondrous things you've never seen before. No, I still have that shanty <laughs> stuck in my head. Hold on. Messing up your cadence then, or what? Because her hair was green as seaweed. Her skin was blue and pale. Her face, it was a work of art. I love that girl with all my heart. But I only like the upper part. I did not like the tail. I signed on to a sailing ship. My very first day at sea, I seen a mermaid in the waves, oh, reaching out to me. Come live with me in the sea, said she, down on the ocean floor. And I'll show you a million wondrous things you've never seen before. So over I jumped and she pulled me down, down to her seaweed bed. And on the pillow of tortoise shell, she placed beneath my head. She chef, she fed me shrimp and caviar upon a silver dish. From her head to her waist, it was just my taste, but the rest of her was a fish. Cause her hair was green and seaweed, her skin was blue and pale. Her face, it was a work of art. I love that girl with all my heart, but I only love the upper part. I did not like the tail. <laughs> There's more. I'll, I'll wait on that. Just, just keep doling out verses. <laughs> I literally printed out four different songs. <laughs> And are I can't all, decide. Are they all sea songs? Like sea shit? Half of them are sea songs. Okay. And half of them are if we go into a town and we want to stay at the inn for free, I'll do a quick performance. Okay. And we'll get a free meal and a free lodgings and everything. Yeah, I think one of your ribbon abilities actually is that. It is! <laughs> uh, one of them has a bit of comedy set in. <laughs> I'm well, pretty, pretty excited about comedic. that one. That was a little comedic. The other one is basically a giant riff on dwarfs. Those tiny little skin springy <laughs> bastards. Taller than Pogo. Yeah! They're still small. <laughs> I'm not pretending I'm not uh, giant. Po Pogo's a self-hating halfling? No! Dwarves are not even close to halflings. Are not they're also close? small. They're just white. Yeah, but they're taller and, than halflings, though. And they're cheap bastards. <laughs> You ever tried to get a dwarf to give you a bit of gold for an ale? Can't say I have. Exactly, it's not even worth it. You can't even try. Good luck. <laughs> Did you know that the limbo was invented by a dwarf trying to get into a brothel house for free? <laughs> Squeezing under the door, them little lads. What? I just watched all three Hobbit movies the other day. <laughs> nice. I'm, I got nothing to do. Leah's at Burning Man. I'm yeah. just bored. That, right. I think that recon was supposed to be pretty good, but I haven't watched it. Hey, G. No. 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 Don't touch it. <laughs> Don't touch it. 
Atari's talking That's about the Dominic. opposite of my life motto. <laughs> 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 All right, so uh, back where we were here, uh, Pogo is tied to a chair. Uh, it is technically you have your turn, but beca- we're going to treat it similar to the slow spell, uh, where you basically have either an action or a bonus action, but not both. Um, and you're, you're still, you know, obviously incapacitated and secured to the chair. What are you doing? <laughs> All right, let's see what I can do. <laughs> Samson is assembling this device directly in front of you. Uh, you can you can hear and, and you know smell her, but uh, uh, Artemis is right behind you. Sarah's off to your left. Has just touched your shoulder. North is still blocking the door. But I'm tied up, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and they have the object. The object is in the middle of the device that uh, Samson seems to be building on the table. All right. Uh, I'd like to say to the group, I know what you're doing, and I know you think you have what you think you have, but you don't. And then I'd like to use Minor Illusion to create another one in my hand. Hopefully. Your hand Hopefully. Is behind your back. Yeah. But it's behind. <laughs> ah, it doesn't really happen. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? I'm going to... Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna say, don't, don't. Oh wait, hold on. Oh, am I am I gagged? Not yet. Not yet. Well, so uh, Artemis has already said that she's going to gag you, but like you didn't hear that. It was. God, I don't want to hurt my best friend with both. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just gonna complain and struggle, and I'd like to pull against the ropes as hard as I can. Okay, uh, go ahead and anyway, make, can... make a strength check with disadvantage. Oh, that's that's really not going to be great. Yeah, the number of the Fox It will also make them tighter. Yeah, well, so Fox will have a 19, and you know, that's, that's just uh, basically she did a good job of tying the knots. So it's How do I roll? It's going to be at least a 25 for you to beat. How do I roll a strength? Oh, that's uh, impossible then. Don't worry about it. <laughs> well, you can. I mean, well, you'd have to roll an extra no, then, 20. That's probably the only thing. Oh, no, I think yeah. even then I have a negative two, so... Well, yeah, but a natural 20 would be a success anyway. So. Oh. But, uh, do you want me to just roll a 20-sided die and see what happens? Can. Yeah, you can. Oh, that. wouldn't happen. <laughs> It'll be a 13. Uh, you're, you're struggling against the, the, the ropes, but it's just not doing any good whatsoever. Like, Artemis has just done too, too good of a, go- a job tying you to the chair. Sarah's turn. Artemis, or, uh, um, uh, Samson says, this is going to take me a, a few seconds here to just keep him from, from reaching this thing. Just don't let him touch it. He'll be fine as soon as I get this thing done. We don't need to hurt him. Right, and I know Artemis is going to gag him. So well, you don't know. Th- well, you know what I would say that the Artemis didn't say that, but you see her standing up and beginning to like kind of pull this this uh, like light also, over his face, like she's about to put him on. And I'm talking a lot of shit right now. <laughs> don't stop the yeah, y'all. Fuck you. <laughs> just, just fuck off. Just give me the my friend back. The I mean the thing. I mean the vase. I mean the the thing with the thing on the thing. Put it in my back. Stop it. <laughs> ah! Great, so I'm just gonna continue to stand next to him and I'm gonna hold Ray of Frost just in case. Okay. But I'm just gonna tell him you're gonna thank us when this is over, I promise. Oh I think won't oh, shit that thing that thing is not there. <laughs> Alright, it's out of Easter. I'm gonna gag him, that's bad. Okay. Alright. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh he is like he's struggling, but the DC is going to be really low. Go ahead and give me a another sleight of hand check. Oh, what? Sorry. A sleight of hand. The DC is just going to be really low. Basically, just don't don't roll below a five, and you'll be fine. <laughs> What's that for? I don't know. I was trying to get sleight. <laughs> no, that was uh, Pogo. Pogo rolled recovery. Uh, I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I, I truly have no idea. I wasn't even touching. I'm holding my hands behind the back, pretending I'm tied up. Like that's literally what I'm doing. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had a bit to drink for sure. Uh, uh, Artemis, though, you, you 
you go to, to, to bring the, uh, the, the the gag around, it's basically just a rolled up rope, uh, you know, a piece of rope that you're trying to pull around his mouth. Uh, but as soon as you kind of go to move it in front of his face, he, he his head snaps forward and he bites into your uh Just bites onto your thumb. You don't actually manage to get the, the, the thing on. You have one more shot for, for your action here. Make another side of hand check. Okay, my mouse is doing something weird. I can't actually freaking click. I can click on it. There you go. Hey, no, there we go. Okay. Oh, damn. Re- like, Fox never gets natural 20s in this session. Uh, the, the first roll is more, uh, you know, apropos for her normal rolls. But uh, basically, you you reach your hand over initially, and he just kind of lashes out and snaps on a bite under your thumb, and you kind of yank it away from him and just pull the pull the uh, rope through, through his teeth uh, and, and secure it around the back of his head. Uh, you are now gagged, Pogo. Oh. All right, uh, coming back around, it would be uh, Norak. Are you doing anything or just blocking the door? <laughs> just gonna try to keep blocking the door, make sure nobody escapes. Okay. Uh, Samson, you guys watch him because it's like. He's almost finished. He's basically gotten the, the discs are arrayed, and there's four of them. Uh, like this, making making a four-sided box, basically, uh, where you can still see the object inside of it uh, with this framing around it. And as soon as he, he, side, he kind of slides the last of the discs in place so that they're kind of perfectly arrayed the, around the outside of this thing, um, uh, it's it, it kind of it, the room just is, is quiet while he's doing this beyond just the clinking of metal. But as soon as the last thing slides into place... Pogo, you're you're like the, the the enthralling effect over you is just immediately dispersed, uh, and you're just kind of oh. sitting there confused. Like you you were conscious through all of this, you were choosing your own actions through all of this, you weren't under its control that you know of, uh, but immediately you are kind of like still. You're not really struggling anymore, and almost confused as to why this thing was so important to you all of a sudden. I feel a lot better. I I made a rim. Samson is just kind of staring at you, and, and uh, oh, in fact, oh. uh, he's trying to figure. In fact, I'm gonna have him roll an inside check. He's trying to figure out if it's if he did it right. If you're if it's if the effect is broken off of you. Uh, he rolled well enough. Um, he looking at, at, at you. He doesn't take his eyes off of Pogo. Uh, he says, "I think he's probably okay now, guys. As long as this thing is working, then, then he shouldn't be under its effects anymore." <laughs> Uh, he kind of looks around at the three of you, uh, the, you know, the, the ones that are not tied to the chair. He says, uh, I'm, I'm a little cautious about this, but I think we'd probably be okay to at least take the gag back off of him for a second and see if, uh, you know, if he's just lying. But I, I think he's okay now. Okay, I'll take it off. Okay. Hey, Samson looks back down and he says, Pogo, is that, are you there? Oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, I think I'm all right. I'm so tired. I just need to take a nap. I think that'll fix me right up. <clears throat> he he looks at you. He looks back down at the at the object that's on the table there, that's kind of surrounded by these plates. He says, "Does this thing mean anything to you?" No, oh, I just want to go lay in bed. I'm so tired. Did someone hit me in the back of the head really hard? <laughs> uh, you, you, I feel. You were conscious. I feel you, like you someone hit happened. me. I remember a ghost fucking smacked <laughs> me in the head with a something. Oh boy, I'm really sorry. Oh, but you were uh, kind of being a dick, so. <laughs> I feel like I was, I was not acting rational. That there was a lot of things that didn't make sense, and uh, I, I at this point I, I could I'm I'm good I'm tired, and uh, feel a little banged up, but I'm I'm okay. Samson, he says, uh, well, I, I think you're going to be okay now. I mean, if we untie you from the chair, you're not going to flip out and try to steal it again, are you? I don't even care about... I don't even know what to steal at this point. I'm... I could really... Did Norak punch me in the head? <laughs> <laughs> He's 700 pounds! Uh, Samson, I'm glad gonna... my head's still attached to my neck! Samson kind of chuckles. He says, "Yeah, he, he punched me in the chest too. Uh, this, this, this is the kind of uh, you know danger I was trying to warn you about. We all he's a hit. 
he's I am not gonna piss him off anymore. <laughs> that was not even uh nope. while, they're, while they're having this conversation I'm gonna cut his ropes. Okay. Um Seriously though, I'm so tired I could probably sleep in the ropes. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> All right. Um, then to uh, Samson kind of begins to, to collect the audio. Am I bleeding? <laughs> I'm bleeding. Oh, oh, my healing word on him. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, we will. You know, you, you uh, band and basically stop the bleeding and, and uh, fix up the wounds. Uh, Samson gathers up the object. He basically is only holding the plates. He's not touching the object itself. But he lifts it up and it kind of it comes as one solid unit, despite the thing is floating, like free floating in in the middle of these four discs. Remember, it's not six sides. It's basically like a four sided box with the, with the open with the top and the bottom open. Um, but he just lifts it up and this thing the thing is floating inside of it. He says, uh, "Norak, if, if you don't mind, I'm gonna I'm gonna carry this thing down below decks and I'm just gonna you know try to try to keep it safe. Uh, if you guys you know keep an eye on him, make sure that he." Red stuff that he's not doing. Get the from, from that punch you gave him. I'll see if I can, you know, get rid of this bruise that you left me with. Okay. I'll use the last two things in my ring. Uh, on Pogo? So we can use, yes, yeah, so we can use two more hit die. Okay. So you roll two more hit dice if you want to, Pogo? On it. Okay. Can't not do it, Fox. <laughs> there you go. Almost, almost fully healed. Um, but Samson, you know, walks his way out of the room basically, and, and uh, you know, you hear him kind of trudging off. Uh, you hear Orvin shout down to him. You can't quite make out what was said, uh, but he, you know, he sees uh, Samson leaving and, and hears that the fighting has appeared to have stopped. Uh, the kind of rumble that was going in the in the captain's cabin there. Uh, yeah, Pogo, you've been re- released from your bonds uh, and are able to, to make your way back over to, to your bed if you're going to head off to sleep. Uh, is anybody so else tired. doing anything? It's time-wise, it's probably... It, it, I mean, you didn't spend that long. Obviously, that didn't take long. It's probably only 4.30, 4.45 at this point. Is anybody doing anything for the evening or is everybody just trying to, to you know, head off to, to bunks and get some rest? Obviously, it's been a long day, of course, at the ship. Probably just gonna try to get some rest as long as it seems because Bogo seems like he's fine now, so I'm just gonna go relax. I'd okay. probably ask if anybody wants any food before going to just like read. When Artemis uh, asks that, what is Sarah doing? Where is Sarah? Uh, I tell her I will be right back and I'm actually gonna go check out my arm. Okay. Because I did use two chaos bolts. You did? Are we uh, there? Yeah. But I do have the cream on. Yeah, exactly. You had the, the, the salve on stuff that, the salve that she had made for you. Um, then she asks you kind of, you know, say that as you're, as you're kind of going around the corner to the other cabin there. Um, you peel the sleeve back and look at it, and it is in probably an inch and a half, maybe two inches above the elbow. All right, so then it hasn't really moved too much. Then. Correct. But you had checked, like, earlier in the morning, so it's been probably eight hours, seven or eight hours at this point, and it doesn't seem to have moved very much. And at least from your previous experience, where it was obviously it had been accelerating, uh, it, it's still moving. It's definitely slightly more, but it appears to be slowed. Pretty dramatically. Right. Then that would actually make me feel better, and I would go get something to eat. Okay. All right, Artemé, what are you providing as far as food goes? Did you bring any of the deer meat? Yeah, I was all in the bag, so it's probably like deer meat. Um, I would probably have made a bit of a stew because I'd also grabbed some herbs and mushrooms and stuff and a few other edibles, so I would probably make a bit of a stew with it. Okay. All right, then you head down to the galley uh, and start, uh, you know, preparing some some dinner. Uh, you guys know that Samson went below decks, but you don't necessarily know which one he went to. I'm just for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to put him down here uh, in one of the, the below deck cabins. Uh, but you you basically made dinner. Uh, Samson does come back out at some point uh, to to eat because you know obviously you can smell it. Uh, you are kind of accidentally ending up cooking for the whole crew. 
uh, because you do have to kind of push them out of the way and the cook also died with the Sawagan attack so <laughs> like the, the, basically the people that are here are all sailors not you know none of them know how to cook and you're, you're the best of the group so you were kind of uh, accidentally nominated to to cook for the crew as well uh, but there's plenty of supplies in there amongst you know the, the what they had on the ship itself obviously the Sawagan Wait, didn't who, raid the who store. was accidentally nominated part of me me sexist <laughs> she said she was going to cook dinner. I didn't know when to hit it. She said, I'm going to go cook dinner. And the crew just said, oh, can I have some? And she's, you know, kind of accidentally nominated in that sense. Uh, okay. So, so, so go make me a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, so you, you do make dinner, though. Pogo probably would still be pretty knocked down. And just no, I'm, I'm fucking well, out. About I am that. done. What, Fox? about that around here the whole can oh you're making a sandwich can you make me one why can't you make one yourself you make this the basic thing yeah if you're already doing it and you're good at it then why not but no like i asked him to make a sandwich <laughs> and he waits till i get up to make one like, oh, make one. yeah so so what i don't see the problem with this oh man all wow. right problem, the the life lesson is <laughs> never like set yourself up to do the, any of these things. You just gotta <laughs> stay in the back. Be like, yeah, who's gonna cook? I don't if know. If you are a, a well-known, awful cook like I am, nobody ever asks you to cook anything. <laughs> so, that's how I pull it off. I remember when I used to hang out with Jeremy and we'd watch TV and I'd be like, you got anything to eat? And he'd be like, there's crystal light. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I don't... My, my food is very simple, mostly out of necessity. Because it's um, complicated and they're burning my house down, so that's not gonna work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you think I'm kidding, I'm not kidding. No. I, I've ruined many pots and pans. I, I feel ended like. I up making a fire in the microwave trying to cook KD, so I definitely get that. Well, not like. But that was before I knew him, but this was the point. 100%. Jeremy is the kind of guy to start cooking something and oh, then forget sure. that yeah. was ever a thing that was happening in his life. And then, like an hour later, be like, "What the fuck is that smell?" Yeah, that's, that's why I ruined so many. <laughs> oh, pans. that's the, yeah, that's the bottom of a pan turning into molten lava. That's, that's what that that's, is. <laughs> that's the bottom of a pan fusing with rice. They're now, one, they're now one object. No longer, no longer is it is it a billion chunk of grains of rice and a pan. It's uh, all one thing. I'm like a fucking alchemist. <laughs> yeah, that's hundred percent. Literally happened to me earlier today. I was cooking green beans and I forgot that I was cooking green beans. I was like, what the fuck is that smell? I would not let you guys oh, anywhere near my kitchen unless you had a specialty to be able to cook something. Like, I do not make eggs anymore because Monk makes the best eggs ever. So that, like, I don't do eggs. But everything else, he's not allowed in the kitchen. So you know what's funny about eggs is you gotta stay there. Like, that's not a dish you can walk away from. String beans, when you're, like, boiling water to steam them, that's like a 30 minute leave your brain out the fucking door type of situation. Yeah. Totally forgot that was a thing that was happening. It's cool you put a timer, timer on. on. Well, I don't put timer. I, I put a timer on to like water plants and that went off and I was like, what the fuck is that smell? <laughs> no. Oh shit. Yeah, I forget things all the time. By the way, Pogo also forgets things all the time. It's going to be a you character You name your timers. Now. You put a title <laughs> on your timer. Oh, I just didn't do that at all. <laughs> or you set an alarm and put like a name on the alarm for like it, to tell you what it is. Literally, my alarm that my timer that said, "Don't no," my my reminder that said, "Don't forget to water the peach trees," made me think, "What the fuck is burning in the kitchen?" So, eh, you know, whatever works. Okay. <laughs> wow. All right. All right. Back into character. <laughs> So, uh, Artemy made dinner, everybody's kind of, the, 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 the three of you, unless you guys wake Pogo up. Uh, nope, I'm around. sleeping. Um, uh, <laughs> go ahead. I would probably take a bowl of whatever she made into him and just, like, kind of shake him awake and tell him there's food and then probably walk out. <laughs> okay. Oh, you're so sweet. Was that, that was Artemy, right? No, no, that's nope. Serafina. That's an uh, apology Serafina. for beating the shit out of you. <laughs> uh, the, he, he definitely takes that into consideration and thanks you very much. <laughs> you guys, then the, the the four of you with Samson then gather around a table um, and and are having you know your your 
impromptu dinner a little bit early still but uh, uh, while Pogo is trying to, to uh, sleep off the head wounds um, <laughs> uh, Sam said while you guys are, are you know having eating dinner there um, he says that like, I'm, I'm, I'm really careful about talking about this I, I don't really know what to say but I mean do you guys have any idea what that creature was that the bottle was coming? I mean, I'll need, to, I'll need to tell his family, and I'm already dreading that, but I don't know. This, this, I guess I'm still a little bit shaken by it. None of us would really have much of an idea, right? They are characters in balance for that, but... Uh. Well, okay, so here's the thing. That's specifically because of the vast erudition these guys would have. <sighs> okay, technical face, well, you would have given us an idea, right? Well, so here's the thing. Part of this, I put this in here specifically to, to kind of fill Justin in a little bit on what the vast erudition is, uh, and actually Fox too, of course, but um, mm -hmm. basically the um, Peter, which of course uh, uh, Becky and Ben uh, know who Peter was, but uh, read a book in the Azel house. Do you guys remember that? Begley? Yeah. He didn't read the whole thing, but he flipped through it, right? So, and the book was specifically uh, detailing uh, this, this big kind of cosmic war between these two species. Um, mm -hmm. And one yeah. of those species vaguely resembled based on what the book looked like and the priest of Neadramoth. Like you guys saw that priest. Both of those looked like what uh, uh, Bottle was kind of halfway between, between a human and that. Uh, that being said, Artemé read a book a long time ago uh, in a in a uh, subterranean uh, necropolis that she was uh, digging through that had some similar references. These were, you know, very old scrolls. Fox, do you still have those notes at all? Yes, I do. Let me see. But so you can tell, by the way, that Samson is trying to say without saying. Um, without saying it directly that uh, that you know that, that that's he's clearly unnerved and that's obviously why that the the things you guys learned because of the vast erudition um, he is is kind of without trying without saying it directly hoping that that's not what it was that you guys were seeing uh, because of what that could potentially mean of course uh, but what Artemé knows would have she would have begun to connect those dots already I found it uh no. I had taken notes. It was last session. It might have been the one before. Uh, <coughs> but specifically, I, I mean, I'll, I'll go ahead and just, just fill it in for the stuff that Artemy knew. But uh, uh, Artemy found these these uh, uh, old scrolls that were depicting these anatomical drawings that resembled what that picture in Bottle's journal was. Uh, and they were called the Illithid. Uh, oh, yeah. I found my notes. Okay. Go ahead. So he, Samson asks then if you have any idea what that thing might be. Okay, so um, Illithids, um, they're so basically they take over other people to reproduce. So they're like a leech like tadpole that's fed into another pr creature's ear canal, which is what the, the little thing, things we've seen that uh, Pogo called. Dick creatures? Is that what he called them? <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. um, they look like penis creatures or something like that. The little yeah. purple things. That's Samson what he says, said. Samson says that yeah, that you're talking about the little purple leech things that we saw. Yes. Uh, so it consumes the brain, and Ilthid is born from it. Um, so there's different variations of Ilthids, and it's based on the species that it consumes. So. I don't really know what he was turning into specifically because they're not really. They're all slightly different. And Samson, that's about it. Samson kind of. Like, you see him kind of holding back a little bit of a shiver. Uh, and he's just kind of still looking down at his food. It looks like he's maybe beginning to lose his appetite a little bit. Um, what what they're referring to, what what uh, the information that Artemy was aware of and had read in these notes, um, is that basically these the, these creatures, one, they don't produce sexually at all. Uh, they're the, the actual creature itself is the little leech tadpole thing, uh, but they're fed into the brain of another creature, and depending on what brain it eats, basically it, what what body it's kind of consuming, uh, in a process called seromorphos seromorphosis. Yeah. 
There you go. Ceramorphosis. Uh, it transforms that creature into an illicit of some kind. Uh, so think uh, akin to... Uh, I think it's in the Alien movies, right? Isn't the in the Alien movie, or at least Prometheus, right? The, the, if that, that thing, uh, depending on what it comes in contact with, right? The black stuff? Is that right, Justin? Justin? Sorry, I was muted. Uh, I mean, yeah, I guess. I think it was in Prometheus, right? Don't they turn into different creatures depending on like the the depending alien? Depending on the, the previous same. creature. Yeah, I think that's what it was, if I remember right. But there's, there's I mean, another. Oh, uh, Mass Effect. It was in Mass Effect as well. The ones that the Reapers mm -hmm. take uh, turn into different things mm -hmm. depending on what they were beforehand. Remember? That's the one. I, I mean, or aliens less Mass Effect, but yeah. You're right. I think they both do, because because all of the creatures in Mass Effect 3, all the different Reaper creatures, those are just the, when the Reapers have uh, taken over a different species, and they're all different types. Uh, but nope, anyways, you're right. Yeah, you'd be right, too. Yeah, uh, that, would, that would be the same. So that that's generally the idea. Basically, the, the squid-faced guy is what happens when that tadpole is fed into a human or an elf, but, uh, you know, a, a kind of a average humanoid shape, let's say, uh, with varying features. One is called an illithid, one's called an illithard, and so on. But uh, anyways, they're, they're slightly different depending on who they're fed into. But that's what uh, that's the information that Artemis kind of passes back across the table. Again, Pogo's not here, so he doesn't actually sure. have this information. Uh, but for a quick lore dump to make some of this make sense, uh, the uh, unless if Pogo got up, if, like, if Pogo ever gets up and, and is having dinner with everybody, then he'd have this information as well. But otherwise, it's stuff you guys can fill in later. Uh, but for Justin, though, the vast erudition that they're talking about, um, basically, the the first the, the campaign that we played that ended in March uh, was our first kind of full campaign. We played for a year and a half. So Ben, Becky, uh, and then Sokka. Y'all the blew up a moon? Yeah. So they ended up blowing <laughs> up a moon uh, at the end of it. Yep. Uh, That's impressive, cool. guys. Yeah. Um, so basically, almost, Martian. almost unbelievable. <laughs> um, the, the basically what what happened though is their entire the, the entire story of that campaign is actually a, 108 years long total. So hence the being a very long story, of course, but uh, literally 108 years uh, of story uh, that they played through. There's there's eight people that went along this, and three of the, the three players were among those eight. So there's five other NPCs that were with them, of course. Um, but at the end of it, though, uh, the this is the uh, just a quick image thing. These are actually some of the same ones from Balance. Uh, this is new for Fox as well, so this is kind of useful information for her. Basically, this this cosmic entity showed up and tried to eat the whole planet, essentially. Uh, and they kind of fought back enough of it, or at least at its kind of focal point, basically, to kind of get it smaller and smaller and smaller, to the point where it was small enough that they could kind of capture it uh, and then banish away that core, that what was left of it, the, the, the kind of start of it. Uh, the person Not gonna lie, you're kind of making me feel like we shouldn't have run away from there. <laughs> ran away from what? <laughs> A sea monster if apparently these people have already defeated an entire i don't know like not us galaxy no, it's of not people? these guys remember it's, yeah uh, oh yeah so Pretty hang on so, so let's let's oh let's i thought you here. meant you guys no. got it <laughs> no uh Man, i was like this seems thing. like some now that we're just i feel like if you did that maybe <laughs> don't care about these refugees like that's not really a that's not really a big plate kind of deal <laughs> going on. <laughs> when you've got, you know, a world eating. Yeah, uh, con uh, yeah we're the Avengers. We're not the United Nations. Let's <laughs> calm down a little we're bit not, here. We're not Paul Blart Mall Cop. <laughs> 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 uh, but, oh, shit. Uh, but anyways, oh. Uh, <laughs> through the, through this, basically, Ben and Becky's characters in a different campaign, in the first campaign that went on for a year and a half, they, their characters yeah. in that campaign, which are Kitas and Navara uh, and, and Peter, um, they went through this whole thing, and at the end of it, uh, through, you won't know all this story yet until I finish the entire text description of, of the kind of recap of the entire campaign, which is a very arduous thing itself, but anyways, uh, all of the events that happened throughout that through a means that you don't quite understand were broadcast out to everyone. So everyone in the entire world knows exactly what happened and all of the steps that it took for that 108 years uh, of, that, of that journey that ended with the moon exploding. Um, so we were all part of this whole thing. The whole world was... The world existed anyways. Pogo existed throughout sure. all of this. But basically one day, about nine months ago, three or, uh, eight months and three weeks ago... Um, right with, before I had my 17th child. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> illegitimate child that you left in some random yes. village, right? Seventeenth illegitimate <laughs> child. Um, 
anyways, you um, the uh, awareness was immediately broadcast out to everyone. So all these people didn't know that this was even going on until one day this big kind of black cloud shows up around the entire planet, and then a, a matter of uh, you know a few hours later, a couple of days later even, um, it, the, the cloud dissipates, the moon is destroyed, all this stuff happens, and as soon as that happens, everybody is immediately just kind of through into like Wi-Fi into their brains are just immediately aware of all of the events that led to that and and how that could have ended and what happened instead. Aware of all the people that were involved, all of the every NPC that was involved, the the people that that, uh, that, that did that in some cases ascended and are semi divine at this point. Uh, Kitas, for example, uh, is Ben's character is is a semi divine being at this point. Uh, his his previous character is in the same world. Uh, so all of that occurs. Uh, the moon blows up. This is this one. Uh, and how they how that actually blew up is they essentially uh, uh, took a, a ship uh, like a spaceship essentially uh, orbited the planet as fast as possible and then crashed it into the moon and blew it up. Uh, so that cracks and, and breaks into pieces. The reason so, that's important. Go ahead. So this is a world that we live in that we can fucking fly spaceships around the Earth to increase their speed and fly into a moon. Uh, yes, but this planet doesn't have that kind of technology. It came from elsewhere. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the so, so I mean, honestly, I was just hanging out in a club somewhere, having a few drinks, and I was like, the end of the world's going to fucking happen. We should have some fun tonight. And then yeah, it averted, and I was like, <laughs> all right, well, nice knowing you. <laughs> Got it. Uh, and then, so, so the basically, when that happened, when the moon was shattered in bits, um, the remnants of it, the, the, the bits that are left of the moon, kind of begin to form a ring around the planet, right? Uh, sure. Like, a, you know, just, just an orbit of it. But some of the larger shards are beginning to kind of fall closer to the planet, or they're still floating, but they're, you know, eventually they will probably crash into the planet and, and uh, you know, cause some serious problem there, too. But basically, about nine months ago, this entity came to Ur, blah, 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 they blew it up. Think of uh, the never ending story, the nothing. That's what it was like, right? Very similar to that. Uh, sure. You've seen, you've seen that, right? Yeah, like when I was ten. So I'm well, sure watch it again. It's a good movie. What's it's a it good called? Movie. It's called the Never, the Never Ending, Ending Story. Story. Got awesome music too, man. I got that song stuck in my head right now. That's a good one. <laughs> that is that a was good on movie. what Big Mouth, honey? Yes. Yeah. That cartoon. They were making the, fun of that on Big Mouth. That's not Lamal. They were no. making. Have you guys watched no. the new uh, uh, Dark Crystal I on Netflix? Yet, I keep meaning to. But no. I, I, it's, it, it doesn't, it doesn't oh. hold up. I don't oh, think really? it holds up. I watched about 30 minutes of it. I was like, ah. I, wait, wait, I just, wait, wait, hang on. It doesn't hold up. You're talking, you watch the old one or the new one is not as good? The the new one, I, I, you'll see, I bet you'll see it the same part I did about 15 minutes in. You're like, eh, I don't know. Like, it was hard for me to watch it. I just had to. I had to change something else. Okay. Although the new Dave Chappelle special, fan fuck fantastic. That's funny. I've heard the exact opposite. I've heard that the Dark Crystal was good and that the Dave Chappelle one was really bad. Nope. Those people are terrible people. Okay. <laughs> you shouldn't hang out with them anymore. Just. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> all right, no. <laughs> um, but no. in the months yeah. since, though, again, it's been almost nine months since that occurred. Uh, oh, it, this just happened. Yeah, this is very recent. Um, basically, we started this campaign about six months after that happened. Uh, and these characters, you know, when, when they first began playing, these characters knew about all this. Uh, so anyways, in the, in the months since, though, the, those shards are still in orbit. There, there's this glittering white ring around the planet. The larger these chunks are beginning to sink towards the surface. Um, and the, 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 ch the bigger chunks, the ones that are not part of the ring that are just kind of floating around, are called the Tears of the Moon. Um, and then there's just basically there's a few of them out there and they're eventually going to, to crash, which, uh, you know, would, would potentially cause pretty significant disruption. So. Um, do we know how big of the destruction they're going to cause, or? They're, they're pretty good size. They're, there, they're, yeah. they're like a good a good size mountain. Like you know, most of them, not all of them, but there is one that's nearby that you guys uh, that Pogo would actually have been aware of too. Uh, it's floating to the south. Uh, in fact, it's over Vabi. Uh, so just right now, if it were to you know crash right down, it would fall in the desert. But they're moving. They're not sitting still. They're kind of still orbiting, just slowly, kind of getting closer and closer as the orbit degrades. And I'm guessing this world doesn't have the technology to know where or when they're really going to land, right? Uh, yeah, they wouldn't have the technology necessarily. It could possibly be divine through other means, but, uh, but yeah, they're not close enough to be a you know an immediate concern. They're not you know they're not going to cause like a you know a, a dinosaur extinction event kind of thing. Mostly just like wipe out a region, probably you know if it falls in a city, everybody's fucked, that kind of thing. Clearly not as important as killing a bunch of refugees. 
Well, you know, the, the world still goes on. We gotta, we gotta put our <laughs> in order here. And, uh, you know, kill these refugees first. Worry about the giant moon chunk later. <laughs> all right, but it's so basically, you guys are having this conversation with Samson. Um, I just wanted to fill Justin in a little bit on the vast erudition part because he needs to deal with it. Appreciate it, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> very much so. Um, Samson uh, mentions that he'll make sure that 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 bottle's message will get back to his wife and his kids. Um, but he's he's obviously seems pretty um, shaken, obviously by the events, and maybe now that the the arc. They could, oh, in fact, actually he. He he says, uh, "You guys had asked why we were making our way out to the to the shore uh, to the, to to make it to Kadogan in the first place, um, and I told you that as long as we got there safely and, and did everything to recover it, you guys put in all your 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 best efforts to do so that I would tell you about this. So I mean, if you, you still you want to know what this thing is, what it's for? Yes. Yep. So the, the this particular arc uh, is called Older Rock. Uh, did I make a note for that? I did not. So it is." Um, which that's that's actually a Latin word, so Artemis you would immediately recognize it. It, it basically it roughly translates to citadel. It's a what word? Sorry, you keep cutting out. Uh, Sorry, my my dogs are barking. I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna mute myself and see what the shit they're barking. Okay, no problem, Justin. Um, it's a Lethalin word. It's an Elven word, so you'd recognize it immediately. It basically, it, it translates to citadel. Okay. So that that specific object is called citadel. Um, but he, he says what these what these things are is they allow multiple uh, arcane practitioners to be able to uh, focus every focus their power through this one device, uh, allowing all of them to be able to um, cast. Pardon my ignorance here; it's not something I'm all that familiar with myself, of course, not being a, a user myself. But uh, it allows them to essentially cra- uh, conjure greater rituals than they otherwise would be capable of doing so. Uh, and this particular one, arcs in general, can be you know tuned to specific purposes, and this one uh, has a specific purpose. And, and the ability, if we have enough high mages capable of doing so, they'd be able to summon uh, the, a fortification that we use called the Crow Fort. Purpose being that if we can do this, we can potentially have a, a, enough fortifications to keep the, the chain of dogs protected through the siege. So that's, I mean, that's the basics. Do you guys have any questions about how they, you know, what they are? I don't know a whole lot, but I'll tell you what I know. I promised I would. No? So, okay. based I would on ask it, how many there are. Sorry. Um, there, we don't really know. I mean, to be honest, we, we don't know how to create them at all. Uh, we as a, as a people... Uh, that was that was lost a long, long time ago. Uh, in fact, as, as far as what I've read, I don't know a whole lot for them. In fact, my church, we, we really uh, kind of revile these things generally. But, you know, being a, a practical person, I, I kind of have to abide their use when they're necessary for saving lives. Uh, but uh, what we, at least what we've read, what we believe them to be, is that they were made by a, a species long dead uh, called the Terrasovans. Uh, Am I still sleeping? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's okay. up to you. Unless no, you... I, I just came back and I heard a bunch of stuff I didn't understand, so if I'm <laughs> sleeping, then that's perfectly fine. This is an awkward uh, awkward pogo dream. Yep, weird pogo dream. But there are countless of these. I mean, they, they continue to be unearthed from time to time, and then they go lost or... Someone finds one and, and uh, does something awful with it until he's stopped, and, and you know until they're contained again. Some some have a thrall like this one, some don't. As long as they're contained, they're usually no risk. So are they the kind of thing that just some any random person that might come across it, like our friend Pogo over here, could they set this thing off accidentally, or is it you know more stable than that? These kind of things, these items. He kind of tilts his head to the side a little bit and looks it up at you. Uh, he says, you know, I mean, we've heard of events like that that do happen from time to time, but as far as I understand it, again, I don't know all that much myself, but as far as I understand it, you have to have at least some arcane sensitivity for it to be functional at all. Okay. But with, you know, lacking training, they're, they're certainly more of a risk. And to be honest, I, I think that's why Pepperjack sent me in the first place, was to... Uh, 
try to minimize the amount of risk of, of someone being enthralled by it. Which, of course, Pogo, it unfortunately was able to, to capture him, and thankfully we were able to get it away. But he obviously has some some capability of his own that allowed that to occur. Do you know what sort of spell they use to summon the report? He kind of kind of grins a little bit. He says, I mean, that's that's far beyond my pay grade. You'd have to ask. Uh, well, we don't really have a lot of squad mages left at the moment, but um, if I'm going to get back, you'd have to probably check with Pepperjack. See if the Cadra has an answer for you. You're saying that this one has like a specific purpose. Can it be used for anything other than that purpose? I think they can, as far as I understand. I think they can really be used to empower any kind of magic, but doing so, of course, comes with its own risk. They, you well, cut out near the end. You said uh, you don't think so. They could, and then it cut out. And then... I, he says, I, I think that they can, but you know, as far as their their purpose, I'm not sure how effective they are. It's really kind of outside my wheelhouse, but I, I, as far as I understand that they are capable of empowering the casting of arcane rituals of any kind. Just they're in this particular type, this particular kind, it has a, a more um, streamlined purpose that it's better at. Whereas okay. a more general use arc. Uh, there, there's different kinds of arcs. I don't know the individual names. You'll, you'll really have to check with somebody more, more schooled in this than I am. Uh, but individual arcs have specific purposes and some are more general use that are a little less powerful but uh, you know can have more universal effects rather than the specific purpose it is intended for. Mm. This one didn't have a thrall, I'd want to steady it. He, he kind of, you can see him uh, kind of pull his, his teeth, like his, uh, his uh, lips over his teeth a little bit, like he's uh, scowling a little bit, like that's a really bad idea. Um, he says, in the right environment, they can be studied, but I'm certainly not capable of providing that for you. You really have to check with the cadre. Okay. Well, that's why I said if it didn't have a thrall, I would want to study it. He kind of nods. He says, yeah, yeah, I understand. So, how does your containment thing work? I would imagine it would be completely enclosed, but it only has four sides instead of six. He kind of shrugs a little bit. I, I don't really know. They just they told me how to do it, and I did it, and it worked. So I'm kind of just following orders here, guys. I, I, I know as much as I know, but that's unfortunately not a whole lot. So can we, like, not look in from the top? Should we not look in from the top? <laughs> I looked at it from the top, you know, when I, when I was carrying it down there. They didn't tell me not to. It didn't seem like it was a problem, and, you know, it's still... I mean, I'll just tell you now that Pogo's not sitting here with us. I'll, uh, it's just down in, in my cabin below decks, and it seems to be fine. I don't, unless unless it's working on me, and I don't know, it, it doesn't appear to be having any effect on me. I don't have any urge to like go down and pet it or you know fight my friends over it or anything. The containment is probably some kind of anti-magic stone or anti-arcane stone. It could be. I know that it had to be uh, the the plates had to be aligned in a specific order in a certain uh, certain way, uh, otherwise it wouldn't have worked. But beyond that, I, I really couldn't say how it functions. Does it seem like he's being sincere with this information? Like he actually wanted to give us this information because he said he would, or give me an insight check. Well, you ate, but you haven't had a rest yet, so the disadvantage is still there until you've slept um, to drop the, the uh, effects of the exhaustion. Um, you, he still, he seems like he's being genuine, as far as you can tell. Okay, now, would Serafina know if, because I'm assuming he's a cleric, right? She knows she's, he's a cleric? Well, remember, Sarah wouldn't think of people in the senses of, this guy's a barbarian, this guy, this, she's a druid, that's a cleric. Sure. But he knows, uh, like, uh, she knows, he knows healing stuff, right? Yes. She know. She would know that she has access to what, or he has access, rather, to what's called the dental rim. Uh, okay. Which is healing magic. Then... Oh, God, I can't believe I'm going to do this. Alright. She is going to ask him if 
he knows anything about curses. Because she's assuming that whatever the hell is happening to her arm is from that little ball and it's some kind of curse. <laughs> okay. Um, I did not expect you to trust Samson with that kind of information. Uh, well, well I guess you're not saying asked... that far. Okay, I gotcha. Um, yeah. He he kind of tilts his head a little bit to the side, like he's like he's uh, kind of brought brought back by that uh, like that question. Not really. I mean, I, I I guess I know how to remove you know simple curses, sure. But I mean, we're talking the type you know placed by woods witches and all. What is your is there a specific aim you're you're looking for? I was just wondering if people who deal with the type of magic that you do, if they would be able to remove a curse, kind of a severe curse, very strong curse. <laughs> Certainly, I mean that's that's not really you know what I what I've trained in or anything either. But um, you know, I mean that that is something that that my uh, <laughs> my church certainly does. Yes. Okay. Cool. He's kind of squinting. Just... Like, uh, in fact, actually, this is going to potentially affect his opinion of you. So, give me a either a flat charisma check, or you can make it performance. I don't think you're proficient in performance, though. I am not. I so am a persuasion. <laughs> yeah, this is this is a little. It's not exactly persuasion. It's more of a deception, if anything. Oh, and still... Oh, <laughs> God damn. Yeah. The same thing! Yeah. Um, yeah, he does not appear to be... Um, you, you probably don't gather too much from this, but he is squinting a little bit, like he's trying to understand exactly where, you know, analyze, I guess, that, that answer and where that might be coming from, but it seems to maybe... Uh, if this was a Telltale game, it would say, Samson will remember that across the top. <laughs> yeah, I figured he probably didn't like me much anyways because I'm a halfling, so <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Um, he says, well, I mean, that's that's about as much as I know about the, the arcs. I, I'm, I'm still, i got to say, I'm a little shaken by what we saw over in the ship there. And, and uh, you know, Bottle's family isn't going to be happy to hear what occurred. But uh, at least they'll have news that he was put to rest instead of being out there as some weird creature. I would say, um, don't even tell them what happened exactly. Just say that when we got to the ship, he was already found dead. They don't need to know all the details if that's better. He kind of, he kind of, uh, you know, his mouth is tight for a second. He looks at you and he says, "As much as your attempt is coming from, a, you know, a place of compassion, me personally, I find that honesty is is a requirement, regardless of how much it might hurt." And besides that, he did specifically ask that. Uh, Know, we, we tell his wife and his kids that he's sorry so I do have to pass that message along which would mean that you know if she asks then for example that uh, how he passed that message along how am I gonna do that without lying and I'm, I'm not gonna perjure myself say so you found a message written in blood I'm just gonna tell her the truth to be honest I see no other way up to you I do appreciate your you know attempt to, to kind of save her feelings though Well, with that, then I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna go get some rest as well. I think Pogo had the right idea of it. Um, this was this was a great stew. Thank you very much, Artemy, um, and for all your help, uh, we've we've managed to, against all odds, recover the the object we came for. And if we can get this thing safely back, then we can potentially save all the lives that are are waiting there for us. So, uh, with that, I'm gonna head off to bed. Good good evening, everybody. Sleep well. And he kind of gets up and, and makes his way out to the. To, well, down the stairs towards this cabin. What are you guys doing? How long has passed since I started sleeping? It's probably been two hours at this point. Nope, I'm still <laughs> fucking asleep. I mean, we're, we're heading into a long rest anyways, unless you guys are doing anything else, but we do have something we have to, to get to. The session ran a little longer than I was originally intending, only because that little PvP thing took a little while. Uh, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll kind of, depending, if you guys, if there's anything else you guys are doing, go right ahead, otherwise we'll, we'll go ahead and apply the long rest. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm actually kind of sad this is the end of it. <laughs> uh, no, it's not. This isn't the end. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
no, that's what I was saying. We just we have to get to something else still so that we can end it, and I don't want to run too long. So I'm sending a message to Pepper Jack before I go to bed. Okay. Let's start the count. 25 words. What is it? All right. Found the object. Okay. Heading back. Okay. Doing okay. Okay. How are things there? Okay. Um, I need to talk to you when we get back. Three, four words left. Three words left. Three or four. It's four. I'm counting along with myself. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I think I counted doing as two words somehow because of the syllable. Anyway. Um... I don't know what else to say. Well, Status quo. Well, you, well, you ran out. You said, I don't know what else to say, so... Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Status uh, obo? Uh, which, by oh. the way, too, um, for Artemé specifically, you could recall Psy at any time. Uh, so you haven't oh, slept right. again since, remember? You haven't slept again since then yet? Um, but yeah. You can, you can snap her back here at any time. You can't send her elsewhere other than to, uh, the, to the dream, but you can bring her back to you without her having to walk back. So oh, okay. Um, I'd probably do that then. Okay. Um, so the last four words, Sarah? Just probably how is Obo. Okay. Um, it's quiet for a minute. Are you are you heading back to your bunk before you do this, or are you just doing this out in the open? Back at the table? No, I would have been out in the bunk. Okay. All right, so you've headed back to your bunk. Is Artemé there? Yeah. Artemé, you went back with him? Okay, then where is... Uh, I'm going to place you guys on here, uh, and I need to know where Norok is bunking, because I don't know, was he just, because the bunks are very uncomfortably tight, uh, so is Norok just sleeping in a tent out on the deck, or what? I think he was sleeping in the office room. Yeah, I think the one just the south of where the ladies are, I believe. Okay. Right, right here? Yeah. Okay. Did you throw all the furniture out, or are you just laying, like, on the table? Oh, I guess I just put it for rain shit and made a spot to lay, I guess. Okay. Alright, you, you brought in, we'll just say that you brought in, like, uh. It's you know. funny because he's giant and awkward. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all the all the furniture's just piled up in the, in, the, in the hallway outside while he's sleeping. Yeah. Alright, then, um. Uh, it's, it's quiet for a minute, though. Um, you don't hear a response for, for a bit. Um, and then. They, the response you get is. Can't talk. They're here. Uh, hang on, can't talk there. I didn't have this written out, so, um... Obo, status, unsure, think alive. Uh, try again in the morning. Alright, I will tell Artemé what he said, and then I would go across and tell Morak, but... Samson has no idea that I can talk to Pepper Jack, so I'm not saying anything to him. Yeah, remember this was, it was given so that you could check in anyways, but it was also to potentially keep an eye on Samson because of the stuff you had mentioned about not trusting him, remember? Yeah. Um, no, but all of you guys had mentioned about uh, the suspicious behavior he had been. Uh, this was obviously before Pogo was there. Uh, Samson, uh, from Pogo's experience here now, of course, you know, it was, he hadn't tried to hit Pogo or anything like that, and he's obviously a racist. But he did do some things before, uh, so for Justin's knowledge, uh, that were a little bit suspicious and they didn't exactly trust him. So they got Pepper Jack to kind of agree to, to kind of keep an eye on him with, over over this so they could report back if there was trouble. That's what that's for. So, uh, anyways, so then you guys you know, heading off to sleep then? Anything else before long rest? Nope. I don't think so. All right. This probably me practicing a bit more sleight of hand. Okay. Uh, give me... Oh. Go ahead. Oh no, go ahead. I was saying I'm just adding more cream. Okay. And I'd make another a fresh batch for that too. Okay. All right. So you guys go through all of that. Is is uh, Norak doing anything else for the evening, or just just heading in and going to sleep? What was that me? You cut out. Yeah. No, I'm not going to do anything. Yeah. Okay. Go right. Oh shit! I'm going to have to undo these guys, aren't I? I'm going to make one more drink. All right, Justin, go ahead, this will take a second anyway. That was Justin, not, not yeah, Pogo. I, Pogo I, is, is passed <laughs> the asleep. fuck out. He's, he's such an alcoholic that he dreams about making drinks. That's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, then... Uh, it's 
uh, I applied the long rest. Everybody should have everything back. Uh, Yay! Becky, your uh, ring, you can set that back to full charges and everything if you need to. I assume that's manual, right? Yeah. My gem of seeing automatically went back. Yeah, that should. Yeah, I think you get back 1d3 every day or something like that. I think I'm uh, I think I'm a little too drunk because I'm pretty sure I can't not speak in this accent now. <laughs> yeah, when you guys, when you We're uh, stuck in this the whole time. <laughs> when you guys took that that break, uh, Justin comes back and he's still still talking in his accent even though he's completely out of character. We're just talking about. All right. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. <laughs> uh, give me one second here, guys. I've got to set something up. I'm still here, just uh, setting it up though while we're sure. While we're waiting, I've got a song prepared for this beautiful morning on this ship. We're not quite to morning yet. Remember, you guys took eight hours from like 6 p.m., so we're still, you know, er well, I guess early a.m. Sure, yeah. Well, I still think we now. all deserved a very long evening. <laughs> I feel like after almost getting sucked into the ocean by a kraken, we're all feeling a bit like we need a good solid 12. Anyways, I'm going to be out on the deck and I'm going to be singing a song. My name is Captain Kid. As I sailed, as I sailed. Oh, my name is Captain Kid. As I sailed. My name is Captain Kidd, and God's laws I did forbid, and most wickedly I did as I sailed. My father taught me well to shun the gates of hell, but against him I rebelled as I sailed. He shoved a Bible in my hand, but I left it in the sand, and I pulled away from land as I sailed. Yes, my name is Captain Kid. As I sailed, as I sailed, oh, my name is Captain Kid. As I sailed, my name is Captain Kid. And God's laws I did forbid, and my most wicked deeds I did sail. I murdered William Moore, and I left him in his gore twenty leagues away from shore as I sailed. And being crueler still, the gunner I did kill, all his precious blood I spilled as I sailed. <laughs> Did you get that one? That sounds like an Irish ditty. That doesn't sound like a sailing song. Well, I guess it um, goes, but... I'm going to pretend like I didn't Google a lot <laughs> before I came out tonight. Spent more time Googling shanties than you did looking up spells for your actual character, like for the mechanics of your character that you would eventually need. You know, 100%. This is what Pogo does. Yep. This is Pogo. <laughs> <laughs> That's, it's true to your character. That's good. All there right. you go. Um, middle of the night. Uh, well, you know, early in the AM, let's say. It's probably at this point you guys are actually interrupted. I'm, I'm still going to leave the full rest on there, uh, but your rest is certainly interrupted. Um, oh, well, one of your rests. Potentially too. Am I already uh, awake? Uh, <laughs> you know, you probably would have woken up a few times at this point, but Pogo, you hear um, a low rumbling growl, and then a, a thrashing and a, just just a, a, a cacophonous noise, basically through the wall on the other side of the door. Uh, Sarah, in the middle of the night, in the middle of your rest, uh, a, a, a shadowy uh, apparition appears inside the room and immediately uh, just. Like collapses on top of you, crushing the bed down. Uh, that is. Which one? There you go. Uh, God damn it! I fucking. Well, I was trying to fix the sound earlier, and the <laughs> audio was messing up. Uh, a well, a familiar sight uh, is basically crashing the bed down. Like the, the frame is broken out from underneath you. The bed smashes into the floor, uh, and one of these hounds is directly in front of your face. Uh, everybody, give me initiative. Oh boy. Wait, can I use, can I use Bardic, it's a can I use my, uh, yep. there we go, yeah, your so luck. I can roll that again? Yeah, your luck works out, it's any skill check, and initiative is just a dex roll, that's all it is. Damn, you went, oh. from, you went from a 1 to a 19. <laughs> I'll take it! <laughs> uh, let's see here, where did my, um, I was still setting up the battle music earlier, and the audio was, was, uh, you know, I gave you at least a minute and a half while I was you, singing. You really did, yeah. And I was still... You know what I'm going to use? I think I'm going to use... Uh... There we go. Not 
great, but it'll work. I think we all appreciate the extra effort. I usually, I actually really spend a lot of time on these, but depending on the week, some, some weeks take more prep than others. This one doesn't take that much prep, this kind of a session doesn't, but when I have a lot of encounters to do, like the stuff on the ship, uh, the last couple sessions, that stuff does, so. Alright, anyways, uh, this hound is uh, smashed into the, to the ground in front of you. Uh, we are actually going to be starting with Sarah. Um, but I would say that you, you instantly hear that there are more sounds on the ship. That there's You can hear more of this kind of growl coming from all around the ship. So, you know, I said I, I had gone outside and I was standing next to the edge uh, and singing my little shanty. So I'm actually like more, I'm more like right around Go ahead on and the... Go put yourself, like out on the deck? You were singing on the, on the deck? I was singing on the deck. Okay. Where where was I? Or oh, where you, am I? On uh, oh, shit. No. I forgot to give you guys the new map. There you go. <laughs> There's the new map. You see yourselves? Nope. Yeah. Uh, you're the second of the four. You're the second one down. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not on this. Hey, you're, you're, you're in the middle of the deck. I can see you on the on a player screen. Well, that's nice, but it's not on my screen. <laughs> uh, is it? Is it? Has it loaded yet? Like, do you see the ships and everything and the clouds and Here, all that stuff? What if I close the map? Oh, there oh, were two maps. Map. Yeah, there's yeah, there's another map. I just showed you the new map. Never close the first map. Go. That old chestnut. All right. Well. Since you are out on the deck, Pogo in the midst of this, in fact, actually, yeah, was, you would see I was this. like, right here, okay. just facing the... Well, as you were staring off the side of the deck there, then, uh, you, you, in the midst of you kind of finishing this song, coming near the end of the song, uh, a, a massive hound, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, and its jaws would probably be seven feet off, the, off what would be the ground, except it's floating up in the air, appears, like, right directly in front of you. Uh, and it's it's like made of smoke. It looks like it's made out of shadows and smoke. Um, and then you, you kind of you know are immediately taken aback by it and see that uh, it's not the only one. That there's a row of them all along, uh, still floating in air. They're kind of like almost dog paddling in the air, basically off the side of the ship. Uh, you look back over your your right shoulder and see that there are two more uh, on the on the south side. Uh, God, Pogo is so mad that he decided to go with this group of people. <laughs> Um, ben and Becky and Fox, uh, they're these, these characters, um, dealt with one hound and got their asses kicked pretty badly uh, with Samson help uh, a week ago, maybe a week before this at that point. Um, and then this time it looks like they've sent six after Sarah. Uh, you, Pogo doesn't know any of that information, but that's, that's where it's at. So, Sarah, one just uh, uh, kind of crashed the bed down up from under you and is about to take a bite out of your face. What are you doing? Uh, instinctively being woken up that way, I would probably just cast Mage Armor. <laughs> okay. So, I will do that, and then... Fuck. Um... I guess just scream in his face that I'd said I'd do what you want. What more do you want from me? <laughs> um, okay. Uh, go ahead and make a persuasion check. I'll remind you from the previous one, the hound yeah. didn't seem to be too concerned necessarily, uh, but... Yeah, uh, well, at this point, if I was sleeping, I would have had the squirrel case in my hand, okay. so I would right. just be screaming at the squirrel case. Okay, alright, that, that makes sense then. <laughs> all right. That may not make sense to anybody other than me, but, but that makes sense. Alright, uh, and you uh, put your major armor up. Okay, that is your turn. Yeah, that's okay. it. Uh, Artemis, the this hound is filling the entire room basically, and has just kind of collapsed the bed out from under uh, under Sarah with a, a, a wood splitting crack. Um, but it's basically filling the entire chamber. It is very ethereal and smoky, uh, and it doesn't it doesn't look like it's solid. It looks like it's it's uh, like a, a, a co coagulation of smoke almost. I'd cast light. Okay. Um, on the Daylight orb. or light? I'd Do you just have light. For just the cantrip. Okay. Alright. Uh, Can you get reacts to it first? There was candlelight in here. Well, you guys probably put the lights out completely, actually. But uh, Alright. So so the, the room fills with, uh, with like, torch light. Uh, 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 that amount, anyways. Any bonus actions? No. Okay. 
Um, you do see that the, the shape of this thing is very wispy and, and uh, ethereal, of course, but it, it doesn't appear to be solid. It's just you, you can kind of see its outline, essentially, now that you've kind of filled the room with light. Okay. Uh, then the, the other, well, uh, the one that's directly in front of Pogo is immediately going to launch itself forward and, and kind of push you back. Uh, it'll be a strength check. It'll be an 18 on Pogo. It's also going to be biting you, but... Uh, uh, not with that. Nope. Uh, 15 hits. Uh, he rolled really shitty, thankfully, but you are knocked back and knocked prone as this, this hound kind of crashes you down onto the deck. Remember, it was floating above and just kind of aimed down at you and knocked you forward. Uh, you are prone uh, with this hound over you. Uh, another... Was somebody just drop a coin or something? Is that what I heard, or was that part of the music? I thought that was part of the music. music. <laughs> <laughs> I heard like a coin drop. I was like, that was a very perfectly audible <laughs> coin drop yeah. for that to not be random. Yeah. Uh, another is going that way. Uh, toward, you don't know where it's going necessarily, but uh, Samson is over there. Uh, Samson, uh, hearing that he's still unarmored, but uh, uh, hearing this uh, does... Uh, you know what? Actually, he wouldn't have time necessarily to immediately react, though. So he's still kind of woken up and surprised. Um, but does, you know, reach over, grab his sword, getting ready to, to come out. Um, the crew is obviously kind of shouted away from, from the noise of this, so you're hearing shouts, but they don't necessarily know what's going on. They're just hearing, you know, that there's a, uh, some, some collapse, now two different collapses of two very large creatures crashing into the deck. Uh, your turn, Pogo. Oh, great. <laughs> so... Now I've finally had a decent night's sleep since the first time that I've joined this group of people after killing a <laughs> bunch of weird fish monsters. And then we took on an entire ocean creature, and now, after one night's sleep, we're being attacked by crazy demonic flying bulldogs. Not even a full night's sleep, even. No, just enough to feel refreshed. Yeah. But you guys no, did actually... At least you did have four night's sleeps between the Sawagan attack and going out to the Ember of the Wave, though. True, and I drank through half of them, wishing I maybe had worked on something else. Uh, okay, so, since I've just been attacked by this crazy flying bulldog, don't think there's much to trying to talk it out of not biting me. Um, alright, let's see here. I'm gonna move... I'm gonna move back a bit. And then I think I'm just going to... What do I have to use? Uh, you were... Uh, you, you can oh, I was prone. Yeah, well, you'd have 15 feet of movement left anyways after standing. So, so let's you basically, see. You can, you, you're Five. Fine. Okay, there we go. All right. No. I think I'm just going to have to cast Tosh's Hideous Laughter on this weird beastie dog thing. Okay. Uh, what does it do on a success? Does it do anything? It does a lot of shit on a success. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, on, on when they succeed. He succeeded on his check. Oh! So does it, like, it doesn't do damage, uh, so does it do anything if they, if they succeed, or is it... Nothing if they uh, saving oh. Yeah, no no effects. No effects. So you throw out your, your hideous laughter at it. Uh, so I was gonna say Hey, you look like a flying bulldog, but not quite as friendly. <laughs> and, and uh let's see, I'm gonna use a bonus oh no I can't see anybody, so that's not gonna happen either. <laughs> yep. Guess I'm gonna end my turn there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back this out a little bit. There we go. Um, another uh, comes sailing through the. Actually, you can't make it quite that far. Let's see. Uh, yeah. I'm blocking the hallway. If that helps at all. Uh, another is rushing towards you. Assume at you. Uh, and makes it about that far, and then stops. This one is like a, a pure white. It looks like like a. It's still shadowy and gray, but basically, like if, if it had skin, it would probably be white. Uh, Norox turn. 
you hear you heard two loud crashes, uh, and you, then you hear Pogo from outside your door, uh, like trying to charm something, trying to entrance something the same way that he had done to Samson a few hours earlier. All right, I'm gonna grab Vulcan and my buckler and go out the door. Okay. And is their door open? Well, I'm assuming I can hear stuff. Is their door? Nope. But I'm standing right in front. That of. door is closed, but there's crashing sounds coming from inside, uh, and you hear growls coming from the right. And you. All right, then I'm. Naturally, you look. You know, to the right, you see over Pogo's shoulder, uh, two more hounds kind of heading this way, like a pincer motion towards you. There's right. dogs everywhere. I'm gonna yell over at Pogo and say, uh, "Light up as much light as you can." It kind of slows them down a little bit. And then I'm going to try to kick down the store. Well, I'm going to try to open it. I'm going to try to open it. I'm going to try to stop Okay. The, the, to the ladies' room. Uh, so. Sarah, Artemis, would, would you have locked the door or no? Probably would have. Okay. Then the door is locked. Uh, it's going to okay. take your action to, to smash it. To kick, kick okay. the door open. Uh, with advantage. Uh, strength? To be, uh, athletics check with advantage. All right. Uh, yeah, you, you kick the door open, um, and it, you, it, you see the door, uh, as soon as it smashes through the frame, uh, like, goes out eight inches or so, and then the door slows down, and, and uh, like, it's moving through, almost like, a very thin liquid, like water, maybe, but, but still even thinner than that. It kind of slowly uh, passes through with a still violent kicking motion as it passes through the rump of this, this very large, shadowy dog. Uh, that's filling up this whole room until it gets to the other side, and then it accelerates again back to the speed it had been until it slams against the the inner wall on the hinges. But you see, you see, this massive hound is is uh, is standing over Sarah. All right, then now that I see that the, the, yeah. the danger, I'm going to yeah, rage. Okay, yeah. good. Okay, uh, another is rushing so he can only get. Let's see, with the others in the way. Get, uh, they can actually move through anyway. Uh, the one that's standing over Sarah is going to take a bite uh, for a 13. So it tries to chomp down uh, uh, on you, and throw your arms up in front of it. And it actually, its mouth is, is around your arm, uh, but the, the kind of thickened skin from your from your mage armor, he bites down into it, um, and you you don't like you feel the pressure, but it doesn't it doesn't break the skin uh, as he's still standing over you. But you are still being held prone. Uh, what are you doing? Okay, uh, remembering what he said last time after we fought the Hound, I will... Fuck. Um, I guess I will open up the scroll and just, because this is the only thing I know to do, is scream at the little fucking orb. <laughs> 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 You, you have one arm kind of stuck in its mouth still, so uh, you, you kind of bring the scroll case up and then try to hold on to, you know, trying to wrench your, your arm free of its mouth to open the scroll case. It's, you know, it's, it's got a, a cap like a screw on lid, basically, or, uh, you know, slipped on, but you're trying to, to pull it off with, with an arm that is being chewed on by this, this hound. Uh, you, you kind of eventually wrench it free until you do have it open. What are you yelling into the tube? I am going to yell, uh, Shadow Throne was his name, right? One of his names, no. yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'm. Uh, also, uh. I've got a couple other ones here. They were, um. There you go. Those are, those are the names you know of, at least. Yeah, so I would just yell, Shadow Throne, I will serve you however you wish. Just please stop, don't hurt anyone, and I'm just gonna stop fighting. Okay. Artemis, turn. Oh, wait, and I'm yelling at Artemis and Norok to run. Can I pass through this thing? Can you cast what? Can I pass through it? Like, is it physically there? You haven't tried, but you did just see Norok smash the door open and the door pass through it. Okay, I guess I'll try him. <laughs> Norok is, like, in the doorway holding his axe. I'm not going to walk into his axe. <laughs> You're not gonna walk into the axe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's probably good. It might be a, a, a very, especially with your roles, would be a quick decapitation. Okay, um, you do. You can. You kind of move in through it, and it's like walking through uh, through water, through molasses, or something. Like it definitely slows you in that space 
but you, you are able to kind of uh, move into its space slightly. Uh, are you you're just prepared to go out the door, readying yourself to go through the door as soon as Norak moves, if he does? Yeah, and also readying daylight just in case this thing tries to attack me, because okay. it kind of blinded the other. Okay. That one is uh, lunging back at Pogo again. It is going to bite at Pogo. Boo! <laughs> uh, for a 21. Uh, 21 to hit, not damage. 21 damage. 15 damage. Uh, give me another strength check. Beat an 18. It grabs you in its jaws. It grabs like into your shoulder in its jaws. And uh, flings its head left and right. And then lets go. Uh, give, roll a d4 for me. Just uh, the far right. Grab it, pick it up, throw it. No, it's east, sorry. Uh, he, he, he lets go of you on a leftward swing. Uh, you smack into the uh, uh, into the mast there, and then are, are knocked a few feet away, and then fall prone back on the floor again uh, when he lets you go. It's not a great couple of days to be <laughs> Uh This one is uh, heading out. You don't know necessarily where he's going, but he said he's, he's uh, moving towards those stairs. Actually, none of you can even see it, so it doesn't matter. Uh, Samson uh, rushes out. He's grabbed his sword and everything. He does have his armor, but uh, he rushes out and uh, he shouts not again. Uh, and he immediately the room fills up, or the room, sorry, the, the the entire sky around you fills up with daylight. It's it's middle of the night. It's very black. There's there's decent cloud cover, but it's immediately filled with light uh, all the way around, uh, which I don't have the effect for. But we'll just basically the the entire area is illuminated uh, all the way around. I think it's what 120 feet or something, right? 60 feet. Okay, 60 foot radius. Uh, for a bright light for another 60 feet. Okay. Um, the crew is is clambering uh, below decks. Uh, the the uh, whoever's at the quarter deck is, is clearly moving. Um, but there, there's just shouts basically going on. Uh, Pogo's turn. You were knocked prone. Uh, you've taken two nasty bites from these things. Yep. That and sounds hear, about right. You did hear Sarah from. Uh, through the through the doorway, she 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 shouted to run. All right. Well, I'd like to cast Bardic oh, Inspir. Oh, oh wait, ahead, no, I can't because I can't see her. Shit. Can I? Uh, you Hold can on. see Samson uh, through the dog. You can see him to your right, and you know that you can see Norak uh, through the hallway. Okay, hear you. That's all it needs. Uh, First, I'd like to give Bardic Inspiration to Serafina. Okay. So, I will click that. And I'm going to say, all right, Serafina, well, good luck, I guess. (laughs) And then I'm going to, I'm going to run down, uh, shit. (laughs) Uh, the downstairs is all the way across by that other Hound of Shadows. Yep. And I can't squeeze through the bars down this little middle spot, can I? Uh, they're a little bit too close together for you to play Okay. Uh, let's see. (laughs) It's a heavy-ass break. You could try lifting it, you know, just enough to be able to slide down under. Nope. I'm just gonna, I guess... I'm gonna I'm gonna run the opposite way five and squeeze under Norak's legs okay. and go back into my room. <laughs> and, All right, uh, and you are going to potentially get an opportunity attack from at least a. I would say that e, you can kind of slip around that corner without getting him, but but a the white one is going to try to bite you as you run by. You know what? At this point, I think I'm pretty much dead if I don't try this. So. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and uh, try that out and see right. if I can knock there. And as you rush by, it, it nips at an ankle trying to grab you, uh, which is a crit. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can even survive this. I think you're going to be knocked unconscious on the deck uh, with one of these Maybe. biting you. Uh, How far did I get? <laughs> well, you, you would stop right there. Uh, All right. Damage exceeds hit points by 21. Oh! So... <laughs> So you made it to here, basically, and and it nips into your into your ankle and just, just what would be normally you know pretty uh, lethal. You just knocked unconscious and then fall forward, 
um, okay. and are laying there kind of bleeding out. Uh, you'll be making uh, death saves here shortly. Uh, it is actually that one's turn. It is... There isn't much room for it to be able to... Oh, shit, sorry. Uh, something else. That I actually skipped the uh, environmental thing that was going to occur there. Um, there's a... From behind you... You, Pogo, you heard this, like, just as your face is falling towards the towards the deck. Um, but nobody's here to see it. Um, there is... Oh, shit. Nobody, nobody can see this. Uh, there was a tearing sound, like, like a vacuum sucking in air. Um... And something happens on deck uh, that you guys don't see, basically, because you guys are all either unconscious or not uh, out of the deck where, where you could uh, potentially see what's happening. Are you uh, sure that Norak can't see it? He seems like he's right about that area. Uh, so he's focused on the hound directly in front of him. I would say that there is a flash of darkness, for lack of a better term, not a flash of light. In fact... That's probably how you would notice it, actually, is because there's a daylight uh, emanating from Samson on the far side of the ship. Uh, it's like a massive shadow uh, fills up this space, which kind of draws your attention very briefly. Uh, Nork, so so you just over your right shoulder, you kind of look out this way, um, and you see a, um, a like a black hole essentially opens vertically uh, five feet or so above the deck, and then immediately stepping out through it, you see a very thin, wiry man, uh, very frail looking, uh, kind of medium or so height, uh, dark robes with a hood pulled up, mostly obscured what looks to be uh, like very dimly golden hued skin uh, and white hair. But in the same motion of him stepping out through the air, uh, he hurls this shadowy rope from one hand, like uh, uh, the way you might fling uh, a car, like if you're throwing a car or something like that. Uh, but he flings this lasso out, essentially, that, that uh, uh, is... He sends it out around... Uh, it would be the two closest to him are A and B, actually. So, uh, let's see... Um, but he flings one hand towards this, uh, which he immediately kind of kind of uh, settles around the neck, uh, this kind of sh- this smoky rope basically uh, around one of the hounds' necks, and he yanks it, pulls it, he pulls it taut, uh, and with the other hand, all the same motion, he kind of flings another one towards the, the white uh, furred one uh, beside him. Uh, and you immediately, you're the only one that can see this, but you immediately notice that the physical form of both of these hounds becomes solid instantly, as if this kind of this smoky gray lasso that he was uh, uh, pulling taut around them is kind of forcing them into the material plane. Uh, and, and he's kind of standing there holding onto both of these and trying to, to wrangle it back and forth. Uh, I didn't get feel it. There you go. Uh, uh, trying to, to kind of hold onto both of them. They're obviously a lot stronger than he is, and he can't really hold it, uh, but he's trying to as best he can. Uh, it's actually his turn. Uh, go, Shadow Mage! <laughs> <laughs> Say this. Uh, Good luck! He can't really do much else because he's holding both of them. So he's basically just spending his yeah. turn kind of holding onto them anyways after he came through. But he doesn't basically have any bonus action. So, Norak's turn. This is why I never wake up early, because this is what happens. <laughs> you could have just slept through this, right? You yeah! Caught, you caught Otherwise, I, was, I decided by being out, singing a song, nice day, we just finished this. Alright, um, if I grab Pogo and move him a little bit, is that going to be my action, or can that be a uh, well, I mean, you're trying to pull him out of harm's way? I'm just going to try to move him, basically pick him up and bring him down, maybe like, you know, over here, so that way he's not directly next to that dog. He's going to take some blood. Uh, and the other one above there. Instant death, sa- or death failure. But if I pick him up? Well, I don't like that. Him, if you throw him, he's going to, you know, like you're going to throw oh, him. Oh, I'm not going to throw him. I'm going to pick him up and set him down. If you're going to pick him up and set him down, it's going to take your action to do so. Okay. Now, you, I mean, you could potentially just step, like, you could, you know, go right here. Just murder these fucking Yeah, guys. so, then, yeah, I'm just going to, uh, yeah, okay, so you said A, it materialized now, right? A, A and B both look to be solid, where the rest of them still seem like they're made out of smoke. Okay. Then, I'm going to see if I can smash up A over here. Okay. Yeah. See if it actually works this time. Yeah, go ahead. You're fine. Uh, misses. Damn it. Okay. Seriously. 
also misses. <laughs> you you uh, uh, bring your axe down into both of these, and it, while it does actually hit into the into the flesh, it was just a, at an awkward angle, and it ended up kind of careening off of it. Whereas before, when you fought one of these, it, it would go through, and it just didn't seem like it was doing anything. It does feel like it's a physical creature this time. You just weren't able to actually uh, make contact, uh, or not, uh, not damaging contact anyway. Um, this one, though, is solid. It can still pass through. is is going to uh, uh, careen around its, uh, its, you know, one of the others here, basically, uh, to get around this to try to take a bite out of you. Uh, which he has advantage on because you're reckless, so it does hit. Uh, give me a strength, uh, strength save. Get an 18. Not with that. Uh, it, it uh, as you would kind of brought the axe down, and it grabs into your left arm, uh, you know, at the elbow, and kind of yanks you down and, and flings you off of the ground. You are knocked prone. That's it for its turn. Uh, C is still in the room there. Uh, I didn't roll to see how it responded. What was the number on that persuasion? It was a thirteen, right? Uh, no. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, yeah, 13. Okay. Um, it it uh, immediately spins its head around uh, and is going to try to take a, a, a bite out of Artemy in the corner here. Uh, you rolled a natural one. Uh, it spins spins its way around, tries to tries to bite into Artemy, uh, and ends up kind of its head kind of sailing into the wall. You see it passing through the wall slightly, uh, and that is it for its turn. It, it actually fumbles, so it would be uh, you know an automatic failure. But in fact, actually. Uh, well, because it couldn't do the effect that it was supposed to be, uh, the target gains an action point, which would be, it would be inspiration. So, Artemy, you have inspiration. Okay. Um, I had prepared. You would what? Oh, daylight? Yeah. Um, you can see through the doorway now that it's smashed open that there's daylight out there as well. Um, but yeah, go ahead and, and you know, from, from yours. Are you casting it at a at a certain object or anything? What are you casting it on? Uh, I'm casting on the orb on my belt. Okay. Alright. Um, the, so, yeah, the entire deck is covered in daylight now at this point. Uh, okay, what's Sarah doing? Uh, try... No, there's no way I can get that other one in there. So, I am going to... I'm going to step out here just so I can see. Okay. And then I'm going to cast slow. Okay. Uh, you're um, in the other cabin, so it'll be right there. No, I'm sorry. No, okay, you're fine. Uh, all right, what are you on you that whole that area? Square. Which one are you trying to... Are you Which ones are you trying to get? The, the All of them in the 40-foot square, because that's how big it is. But isn't it pick, a, then, isn't it pick certain of the targets over? Is it like... Is it target, is that it's... Score? Five. It's six. Okay, all right, then you're fine. Go ahead and target uh, the five that are touched by it. So that's and I can't... everybody except for... You can't, everybody, you can't what? I can't get the square to delete. So. Oh, I can take care of that. Uh, F is the only one that you can't get. So is there. Yeah. All right. Uh, go ahead and hit the effect, but as far as saves go... Uh, two succeeded and three failed. Uh, it is the ones that failed are D, C, and A. Alright, so... Who gets that? Uh... And more from your spell thought, of course. Okay. And was that B or D? D is in dog, C, and uh, A. Okay. Okay, and then as a bonus action, well, I'm going to move a little bit more forward. And as a bonus action, I'm going to spend two of my Ring of Healing Surges. Oh, so he can use... Oh, it's on Pogo? Yeah, so he can use one hit die. Okay. It does work if they're unconscious, right? Yeah, because we established that the last time. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense, too. All right, uh, Pogo, you can roll a hit die, which will wake you up. So you don't have to roll uh, death saves. Nice. Max roll, too. All right, you are no longer unconscious. Uh, you are Woo-hoo! still face down with hounds standing all around you. 
Uh, Can I pretend to be unconscious so they're not paying attention <laughs> to me? Just play. Uh, I'm like so terrifying. not. Un I'm so not conscious. <laughs> That's what an unconscious person says. I'm so not conscious. Very much not conscious at all. All right, Artemis turn. Uh, you guys can now see that there's the shadowy mage standing on the, uh, floating above the deck slightly, uh, that is holding, uh, two lassos, like these rope, these, these shadowy ropes that are, uh, between, uh, himself and A, and himself and B, which is, like, wrapped around the, uh, uh, the mask there. Okay, oh. so... I'm just screaming stop as I do that. Okay. What's Artemis doing? Stop what, though? The, the man has not responded. He's still um, very, like, trying hard. He's not, he doesn't appear to be very strong, and he's trying very hard to hold these ropes that are making these, these sounds solid. I'm probably just going to use my whip on the closest. Okay, the one in front of you is solid, so go ahead. You send your whip out and it actually lashes around it, all the way around its, its torso, uh, around to its belly, then you yank it away, and you see it pull off a strip of flesh that that, uh, that your whip is like clearly trying to drink up, um, but it's, it looks to be bleeding, it looks to be a solid a solid uh, uh, animal, and it never, it did not the previous time. Uh, it does appear to have actually hurt it. Okay. Uh, in fact, actually, these, uh, by the amount of... Uh, the, the wound that it inflicted, these things may not even be all that strong. It's just a matter of being able to actually hurt them at all in the first place. Is that if your turn? Yeah, I'm just going to move the back over here. Okay. Uh, you're still in the range. You're fine. Yeah, so no, no opportunity. Uh, this one is going to uh, lunge at the, the mage himself. Uh, he bites into the, uh, uh, the the left arm of the, the shadowy mage, uh, which who, who yanks his arm away, but it, it drops the, uh, uh, the the shadowy rope that was holding between him and A. So A immediately uh, turns back into this this kind of smoky form. Uh, he can't get around them. Uh, yeah. Over. Fuck you, E. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he is going to get as close as he can. He's going to come over because he can, he's, he's still smoky, so he can flow up, fly up through the air and come down on this side, but he can't quite make it over to Norok. Uh, F is going to bite that Samson. Uh, which misses. Uh, Samson's turn. He's going to try to swing into him as well. He doesn't see what's going on necessarily over there, but... Yeah. Uh, it passes straight through him, doesn't do anything. Okay. Uh, the shadowy mage is is shouting to you, saying, uh, shouting at, at the group of you, saying, "Just kill them. We have to. We have to kill as many as we can to make them flee." Your turn, uh, Justin. Pogo. <laughs> yeah, Pogo's turn. Since you're since you're stuck in character due to inebriation. That will happen. Oh, uh, great. You're still badly wounded, uh, but yep. you are conscious. I am all fucked up. <laughs> Let's see here. Which ones are actually physical at this point? He, Shadow he is the only one that's solid right now. The it's only the one that's solid. Which just happens to be the one that's standing on you, or standing over you. Not, not super the greatest thing in the world, <laughs> but... All right. <laughs> Wait, are these guys not showing up in the combat tracker? Uh, they are for me. They're not showing up on my player side for some reason. That's weird. Oh, nope, they're not showing up on yeah, mine Yeah, they're either. not here. Just, just kidding. Ah, <sighs> shit. How are you? Oh, you targeted him for the map, I see. 
There yeah. you go. Now you can see them all. All right. I can't help it. Bye. If I try to run up behind Shadow B, will it be able to do uh, an attack on me? Uh, you're small enough; you can run like underneath it. It's it's stand it's 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 like running under a moose for you. You could probably walk like standing straight up, and still like the top of your head might barely brush its belly. By the way, super doesn't really make me more excited to be fighting these things. <laughs> but all right, so they're guarding. Uh, I mean, their mouth is in Norok's face, and he's seven and a half feet tall. So. Yeah, that's not, that's not great. <laughs> that's not great at all. Um, all right, let me read here. <sighs> all right. I'm going to move up five ten. How long does it take me to get off my prone feet. position? 15 feet. Half your, well, so it's half your movement, so you'll have 15 feet. 5, feet 10, 15. Okay. Uh, you can go around the mast, so you could basically... I mean, you're, you're close enough. You oh, basically be like right. right here. Right I here. mean, I could be here. That, yeah, that won't be, really Yeah, you, because you can occupy the same space, or you can move through it anyway, so... Okay. I'm to carefully... Past hypnotic pattern. Let me make sure that this will work. Okay. Oh, that's a. That's not what I wanted. Um, I'll, let you. me tell you first. When you tried your hideous laughter, um, it shrugged it, it. It didn't even. It didn't seem to be affected in any way. It wasn't even a matter of oh. whether it resisted it. It almost seems like it was entirely ineffective. <laughs> okay. In that case. I'm actually just going to go ahead and swill attack Hound of Shadow B. Okay. You're going to jab him with your rapier? I think that's all I can do is okay. attack him with my it, rapier. It seems He's to solid, be attacked, right? Actually, when you ran, yeah, it's solid. When you ran underneath it, you got pretty well drenched in blood. The, the wound that, uh, that was opened in its belly by Artemis' whip uh, is pouring blood out of it. Like, these right. things do not appear to be very healthy. In fact, they look quite cool. sickly. This one that's solid in front of you appears to be very sickly. I'll attack him. Okay. Right there. Uh, that hits. Uh, <laughs> uh, the you uh, run around to its flank and jab it in through uh, through your rapier right in through its rib cage, um, and you, maybe you hit the heart. You don't know, but but uh, whatever you hit, the, the the beast kind of freezes solid for a moment, and you yank it free, and it just dissipates like smoke on the wind. It's just gone. Uh, all right, and then I'm also going to use my bonus action. To heal myself, because targeted. There we go. All right. Because I'm I'm basically almost dead at <laughs> okay. this point. You got you taking a lot of beating today. It's not been great. Yeah, most of it was from the party. So. The last couple of days have not been my favorite. Uh, the shadowy hound in front of uh, Norok's face is going to take a bite out of him again. Uh, which definitely hits 27. Uh, for 22 damage, you take half, of course, for being for raging. Uh, and make a uh, DC 18 strength safety. If he can yank you prone again. Oh, you're still prone, actually. So, he, oh shit, he'd have. Well, okay, he would have had advantage on the attack because you're already prone. Oh, did he have advantage? He dropped a 10. Yeah, he <laughs> did. He did. It's fine. Hey, I'll I'll be right back, everyone. All right. Uh, well, you can't be. Hold prone, prone twice, so you're you're fine. He tries to, to kind of uh, yeah. throw you, okay. swing you around on the ground, but you're you're still in place. Uh, that's it for his turn, though. Uh, the mage is going to throw out another uh, lash and try to grab onto uh, E. Uh, actually, he tries to grab D and E, uh, both nearby him. Uh, which is that one? Okay. Uh, the you see that the shadowy ropes over over the this one's shoulder. Uh, lash onto B and E, uh, and he's shouting at A to. Uh, in fact, actually, he shouts. Uh, hang on, he shouts. Uh, I, do, I think it's like this. Hang on. That's what he shouts. 
Uh, and he's shouting it, like, in your direction, or You don't know if he's trying to talk to the hound or what, but that's what he shouts. Uh, that, that was to everybody, too, so... All right, Nora, start... Oh, okay. The one in front of you is not solid. Uh, e is to your right. So I'm going to sidestep and stay within range and see if I can bash him. Okay. Uh, hang on, I gotta... Since they're solid now, E and D. Okay, go ahead. And it hits. Okay. Nothing matters, but I should have had advantage. Unless the reckless. Either way, doesn't matter. Uh, it showed advantage and just. Oh, you still had prone on, that's why. Oh, oh, I would have stood up, but either way. Yeah. So. Uh, you can go ahead and reroll and see if you get a crit. But it, I, I can tell you that these guys don't have very much HP as long as they're solid. So. So That's fine. I'm, I'm not worried about it. pretty much time. Okay, <sighs> um, uh, Okay. Go ahead. We'll, we'll, um, we'll just pick it up here next week then. Um, yeah. Since Fox has to go. Uh... <laughs> You did. You you cleave through this second one that was solid, uh, and and it just cuts a, a wide open swath through what would be basically it's it's like its shoulder, uh, uh, and it's his, his. Oh shit! You guys can actually see names when they fall out, huh? Whoops. Anyways, uh, I forgot. Have I died? Have I died yet? <laughs> no, you're not bleeding out or anything. All right. Um, Wasn't sure. The the shadowy mage uh, uh, lassoed uh, the two that are nearest to him. Uh, the other one, A, is still solid. But uh, basically, as soon as that one is is cleaved down, uh, the others start to, 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 to back away slightly, and it seems like uh, the mage may have managed to get control over a couple of them at least. Uh, but we'll go ahead and end there for simplicity's sake, Fox. Uh, uh, let's see. What is next week? Uh, the 7th? Everybody good for the 7th? 